The University of Miami might be the biggest thing to hit Boise, Idaho, since the Rolling Stones did three weeks ago. And like the Stones, the Canes looking for some satisfaction. As for Nevada out of the whack, they come to Boise poised and ready with their fans to pounce on a golden opportunity against the Canes. The Miami Hurricanes once again have an impervious defense. Led by Calais Campbell, the U can shut down most anyone. But will Miami's offense be able to put up enough points to send Larry Coker out with a victory? For Nevada, offense isn't a problem. Wolfback quarterback Jeff Rowe pulls the trigger on the pistol offense that averages over 30 a game. The ACC, the WAC, next. We are nestled in amongst the protrusive and majestic peaks of the Rocky Mountains, the westernmost point here in Boise, Idaho, on a cool night, and it's just begun to snow, folks. Welcome to Bronco Stadium in Boise. It's the MPC Computers Bowl. The Miami Hurricanes out of the ACC coming in at 6-6, six and six, taking on the Nevada Wolfpack, 8-4 and four out of the Western Athletic Conference. Nevada certainly a team on the rise. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, along with my friend here, David Norrie, Heather Cox down in the field. From all of us at ESPN to all of you at home, all the best in the upcoming year, 2007. David, 2006 was a turbulent, tumultuous year for the University of Miami, both on and off the football field. So the searing question coming into this game tonight is, what's their mindset? Well, I think when the bowl matchups were announced back in December, the big question in everyone's mind was, would Miami show up for this football game? Playing in 20-degree weather in Boise, Idaho, against Nevada, of all teams. And, you know, you look at Miami over the years, this is a program that's played for BCS titles. They play after the new year. And there's one thing that is not in question, though, Mark Jones, and that is the defense for the Miami Hurricanes. This is one of the top three or four defensive units in the country. They start up front with a fearsome front four, a front four that's capable of putting pressure on quarterbacks, and then they've got skill athletes at all three levels of the defense. I think it'll take a quarter or two, though, to see if Miami really wanted to show up and play in this football game, Mark. That defense of the Hurricanes has really set the tone for them for most of the season. They have been intransigent all year. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field, Nevada, they've won five of their last six football games, tripped up recently by Boise State. They are the decided favorites here tonight as they come onto the field here at Bronco Stadium playing in their second back-to-back -back bowl game in school history. Jeff Rowe, their quarterback, leading the way. And, uh, David, I don't think it's an overstatement when you say that a win tonight would be the biggest in school history. Oh, it definitely would be. It, it, uh, that might be a, an understatement. And for Nevada, the game's going to be on the shoulders of Jeff Rowe. He's a bona fide NFL prospect. He goes six foot five, 230 pounds, and one of the best quarterbacks throwing the football on the run that we've seen all year long. That's going to be a key tonight, working against the defensive front for Miami getting outside on bootlegs and sprints. He's going to have to be free. He's going to have to be clean in the pocket to have success against Miami tonight. They have said to a man that we have never seen a team as big and as fast and as imposing as the Miami Hurricanes out of Coral Gables, Florida. Taking the field, looking for their 10th consecutive winning season and that one of the underlying storylines of the game tonight. A new quarterback, making his fourth consecutive start, Kirby Freeman, and Larry Coker, their head coach, wearing the headsets as their head coach for the last time in school history. His spirits certainly not dampened by his recent fortune 
the Hurricanes and the Wolfpack coming right back with the opening kickoff after this. Under the lights here at uh, Bronco Stadium in Boise, Idaho. Let's go downstairs now to Heather Cox. Mark, on November 24th, Miami head coach Larry Coker was fired following a 6-6 six and six regular season. But don't forget, this is a coach who went 9-3 and three a year ago, has won 81% of his games, and won a national title while at Miami. Don't be surprised if Larry Coker isn't out of the game for long. The 58-year-old told me he has no designs on retirement. He then told me he'd like to stay in the college game, doesn't want to go to the NFL. He said he doesn't need to be at an elite program. He just wants to be somewhere where he can have a positive influence on college student-athletes and guys there's no doubt this team is playing inspired for its departing coach tonight yeah that's right Heather you know if appearances and practice mean anything this team is extremely ready to play football Larry Coker one last time on the sidelines as its head coach Randy Shannon the present defensive coordinator taking over after this game there's a look at the temperature 30 degrees a uh, balmy 30 degrees no gloves on the talent up here in the booth yet and local ski conditions uh, just starting to trickle down a little bit snow wise uh, and it was interesting that a lot of the players for the Hurricanes actually got a chance to see snow for the first time out here in Boise Idaho had a chance to tube down the mountain a little bit earlier this week Miami won the opening toss they defer to the second half Nevada will receive Chris Alt in his 22nd season as the head coach at Nevada. This is his third stint as its head coach after being its athletic director prior. Chris Alt told us that this would be the biggest win in the school's history on this stage if they could pull it off against the Hurricanes as the ball goes through the back of the end zone. And let's take a look at the Nevada lineups. How you doing? My name is Matt Hines, junior nose guard from Nevada Wolfpack, here to introduce our unique pistol offense. First, our backfield with the explosive duo between Jeff Rowe and Robert Hubbard, who give us fits every day in practice. Next to the big uglies, our main man, Jimmy Wadhams, the comeback kid, one of the toughest guys I've ever gone against. Both against Miami, our pistol offense will be smoking. Don't want to leave any bullets in the chamber, David Norrie. They seem uh, ready for something special tonight. McCoy in motion on first down and 10. The pistol offense will give you a little uh, recap on how it works sometime soon as Rowe fires. And the pass is going to be ruled complete right near that first down marker. At the 30-yard line, Mike McCoy making the catch. The 6-foot, 190-pound sophomore. And let's talk about the pistol. How is it unique, David? Well, it's it's a hybrid. It's it's in between a quarterback going from under center and then the traditional shotgun. The traditional shotgun of quarterbacks at five to six yards, but Jeff Rose sets up at four yards with a running back typically behind him another three yards, and it gives you a lot more in the run game in terms of effectiveness. They hand it off inside to Hubbard, and he stopped up at the line of scrimmage by Calais Campbell as we take a look and a listen to the Miami defense. Hi, I'm Devin Hess, the Chicago Bear, all-pro punt return, former University of Miami Hurricane. I'm here to introduce the star and D of University of Miami Hurricane. Up front, we got Calais Campbell, known as the sack machine. Coming behind him, we got John Beeson, that's known as the beast. Then we got coming in the secondary, we have Brandon Merriweather, one of the hardest hitting safeties in the NCAA football today. Backing up, we have we got KP, known as Kenny Phillips. It's uh, certainly a very talented secondary and a lot of interchangeable parts back there in the defensive backfield. Rowe fires, it's complete. Up near the 40 yard line to Poodwell, the tight end, right down by Tavares Gooden. We're going to see a lot of different looks and formations out of Nevada today, aren't we? Well, and, and you'll also see the pistol. We talked about the pistol offense with the depths of the quarterback and the running back giving this team a lot more effective downhill running game. It also helps in the play-action pass game for Jeff Rowe and the wide receivers. And again, you do not want to drop back all night against this front four. They're going to move Jeff Rowe. His strength is throwing the football on the move. It looked like the University of Miami had a tough time getting the right personnel on the field that time on third down and one just underway here in Boise Idaho Larry Coker under the lights for the last time for the U back after this <laughs> all right this telecast is available on ESPN HD presented by Pioneer Plasma displays right here at, uh, Chile, Boise Idaho 
Third down and short coming up for Nevada on its first offensive sequence of the ball game. Out of that pistol formation, they hand it off, and it's Hubbard. And Hubbard gets the first down, running over the right side of that offensive line, which will include Dominic Green and Greg Hall. So it's first down for the Wolfpack. Yeah, and it starts up front for Nevada offensively. This is a group that really doesn't jump out at you in terms of talent, but they work very well together. They're better than the sum of their parts, very aggressive, and they don't take plays off. But I think in Miami, initially in this football game, is going to have to get used to the intensity at which this offensive line plays for Nevada. First down and 10. Nevada very unique. It's not like you see this type of offensive formation run every day. It's going to be Hubbard again, brought down by Tavares Good. Take a look at the tail of the tape, and the ones that jump off the page at you are Nevada's ability to score points and Miami's total defense, number 19 and number 5, respectively. Uh, and you look at the struggles that the Miami Hurricanes have had offensively throughout the course of the year. They're number 5 in the country in total defense. They're only giving up 66 yards a game on the ground, which is fourth in the country. And when you look at the way the offense has played this year for Miami, I don't think it's a stretch to say this might be the best defense in the country. One of the leaders up front, Calais Campbell. And on cue, the pressure comes from the defensive edges making the stop along with Atkins. A big loss on the play and a stout play defensively by Campbell. That's why he's the team's MVP. Now well, Calais Campbell, number 81, is one of the most imposing defensive linemen you'll see at this level. Six foot eight, 290 pounds, and he runs like a linebacker. You got Baraka Atkins at the other defensive end, taking advantage of some of the double teams that Campbell has seen throughout the course of the year. These defensive ends are big time threats. To think that Campbell came in at 215 pounds as a freshman. Third down and 22 coming up. Rowe, little shuffle pass. And Hubbard takes it out to the 42-yard line. He's about 10 yards short of the first down. Beeson and Cook making the stop. A couple of talented linebackers for the Hurricanes. And Campbell in on the play again. Fourth down coming up. And in comes the punting unit led by Zachary Whited. There's a look at Whited. And Bruce Johnson back deep for Miami. He's standing at his own 20-yard line. Whited averaging about 39 per. Special teams has been a bit of a bugaboo for Miami this year. And Johnson calls for the fair catch at his own 30-yard line. As it's 28 yards on the punt, nothing on the return, and let's meet the Miami offense. Hi, Devin Hester, back again to introduce the Miami Hurricane offense side of the ball. In the backfield, we have Jabari James, better known as Little Baby James, Edwin James, Little Cousin. Up front with the big ugly guys, we have Derek Moore, and you best believe the youth is here to light up the blue turf tonight. <laughs> that thing might be searing when we're done here. <laughs> First down and 10 coming up, Kirby Freeman. That quarterback making his fourth consecutive start, taking over from Kyle Wright after Wright broke his thumb in the Virginia Tech game the first week of November. Freeman gives you an added dimension of mobility. The pass complete to Sam Shields, and Shields takes it out for a first down to the 42-yard line. Well, the Hurricanes figured to come out in this ball game. We talked to the coaches throughout the course of the week. They wanted to open things up, and this has been a transition period for this offense with the new quarterback, Freeman, taking over for Kyle Wright, and they've brought in an extra wide receiver for Larry Coker. Spread things out. They want to take advantage of his mobility, his ability with his feet, and also get the ball spread around to some of the talented athletes on the outside. Javaris James on the handoff, quick cutback. That's what he brings to the table, but he's brought down to the 45-yard line by DeMars as we meet the Wolfpack defense. Hi, Jeff Rowe, quarterback for the University of Nevada. I'm here to introduce the starting defense. I hope they give Miami as much trouble as they give me every day. Up front, number 91, the Wax Sack King, J.J. Milan. A linebacker, we got 56, Ezra Butler. We know him as Izo. And in the secondary, Speedy Gonzalez, Joey Garcia. That yeah, goes Joey Garcia with uh, six picks this year. There's a look at Butler. Second down and eight coming up for Miami. 
Those are the ball resting at their own 45, working out of the shotgun. Freeman to James, wide open out of the backfield. James has the first down and then some into Nevada territory at the 40-yard line. Tavares James was all ACC, all freshman, picking up 15 on that play. Yeah, that was a strong play by Freeman here early in this football game. Takes a look downfield, comes down to a second choice. That's a well-placed football. Right in the front pocket gives James a nice opportunity to take the ball downfield and move the chains. You can talk a lot about the intentions of this Miami team and its motivations collectively, but when you have an outgoing regime, that's one thing. But when the incoming regime is up in the booth with a very close and discerning eye, I'm speaking of Randy Shannon, the incoming head coach, you'd think they'd be motivated to play. They're certainly looking good on offense so far. Before that play, James brought down by Engstrom. <laughs> Interesting numbers up here. Uh, Nevada, as you go down to the bottom, David, they led the country in turnover margin for most of the season. Yeah, but you look at the rankings here in terms of offense. Miami, 88th in the country in scoring offense, only scoring 19 points a game. That does not harken back to some of the great teams that have played at the U. Little inside handoff. James stays on his feet. Down to the 30-yard line and near another Miami first down. Tavares James, the cousin of Edgerin James, uh, grew up in Immokalee, Florida. And what a story he's been for Miami. Got the start after only three games as a true freshman this year, playing behind Charlie Jones and Tyrone Moss. But it's scary to look at him, look at his running style, and then... <laughs> Look back at Edger and James. I mean, he has the same ability to make you miss. He can run with power. And just like Edger, and he has the ability to lower that shoulder and take linebackers for additional yards. For those of you just seeing him for the first time, he chose Miami over USC, Florida, and Oklahoma, amongst others. Here's James again. And James this time brought down at about the 28-yard line. Had 767 yards rushing on the season. Of Immokalee, Florida, and for those of you who are geographically challenged, that's about halfway between the east and the west coast of Florida, across I-75, Alligator Alley. And James closing in on a freshman rushing record at the University of Miami. Yeah, some pretty impressive names on that list, and Clinton Port and Portis. James has Clinton in his sights, and with a good game tonight, he'll take over that number one slot. Already with 15 yards, backside pressure, Freeman delivers a dart complete down to the 17-yard line. Sam Shields, the freshman, gives Miami another first down on the 10-yard pickup. And Freeman really in a nice rhythm right now. Shields, though, come up limping. Uh, the struggles all year long for Miami on offense, well documented. Kyle Wright, who... Miami lost after nine games with the broken thumb. Freeman taking over. The quality of play at the quarterback position, just not at the same level that we've seen over the years. But I like the looks of Freeman early in this game. He's really settled in the pocket, making nice decisions with the football. Two tight end formation. They like Greg Olson in these situations. They run it with James, and Javaris James brought down after a gain of about one by Matt Hines. Well, David, we talked about the motivations of Miami and the question being whether they would show up. So far, the indication's pretty good, you'd have to say. Well, the intensity level on defense certainly there, and I like the execution on offense. And we haven't even seen Freeman run the ball yet. That's going to be a big part as we look at, it, at James' numbers there. That's going to be a big part of the Miami offense as this game moves on. Freeman is a heck of a runner from the quarterback position, and he will test a defense. Ninth play of the Hurricane Drive. Ball at the 18-yard line, draw play for James, patiently waiting for his blockers down to the 10-yard line, and that's the part of the game. That's the subtlety that Edgerin, his cousin, says that he didn't have at Javaris' same age as a freshman. Well, he is a very mature runner for, for a true freshman, and a great uh, block up front from Wolschlager. James has the ability to pound at you in between the tackles. It's on that last play lower in the shoulder, but what's unique about him is if he gets the corner, he is a home run threat. He's a he is really the type of back who's a threat to take at the distance. Third down and three coming up. Deep inside the red zone. 
Freeman hands it off to James, spins on a dime, and James down to the five-yard line. He is right at the first down marker, and it appears as if he got the first down, crossing the five just barely. The Hurricane offensive line is winning the battle here in the first quarter up front. Two tackles, Jason Fox and Reggie Youngblood lost at times. Young, talented tackles back in the lineup. And with James pounding away inside, Miami getting a lot done on the ground. 11th play of the drive, Freeman keeps it himself. Kirby Freeman down to the one yard line for Miami. Kirby Freeman very comfortable in this type of offense. Freeman out of Brownwood, Texas actually ran his father's a spread option offense back in high school. But like a lot of other athletes on the Miami squad, both offensively and defensively, Kirby Freeman very heavily recruited out of Texas. A talented throwing arm, and for Randy Shannon, as he moves in the head coaching position, he's got a heck of a talent on his hands. Lining up in a jumble formation, James going to be stopped short of the end zone at about the one and a half yard line. The surge led by Jason DeMars, and it'll be third down and goal. Are we looking at two down territory, perhaps, David? Well, it's, it's we'll have to see what happens here on third down, and, and I, I would assume that Larry Coker is going to let down his hair a bit in this football game. Not a lot to lose here, playing in a bowl game up in Boise, Idaho against Nevada. If they don't lose yardage, wouldn't be a surprise to see them be in four down territory. Freeman keeps it himself. Still no signal. It looked like he got in. Yeah. And now they say touchdown. Kirby Freeman gets Miami on the board first. A very methodical, workmanlike drive, precision-like drive by Kirby Freeman and the Hurricanes. They lead 6-0. That's his first rushing touchdown of the season. Teddy's extra point is good, and Miami leads it seven to nothing out of the box. You think the cold has bopped them so far? It's about 80 degrees in South Florida right now, but Miami heating up the Boise night right now. We'll be back after this. ESPN College Football, the MPC Computers Bowl, is presented by. Alltel Wireless. Come and get your love. Alltel. Want to choose who you call for free? Get my circles. And in part by MPC Computers, made in Nampa, Idaho, and preferred by companies around the world. And Pontiac. Vote now for the Pontiac Game Changing Performance of the Year at ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. A $100,000 scholarship contribution is on the line. Look at the Capitol Building here in Boise, Idaho, and folks, if you'd seen about 30 or 40 Miami players that had never seen snow before tube down a mountainside earlier this week. I would say, David, that they're very acclimated to the weather out here, yeah, especially by that opening drive. The Kirby Freeman practicing on this turf early this week said, hey, the blue turf, I swear it makes it colder. <laughs> D'Angelo Wilson watches the ball go through the back of the end zone. And Nevada will start off on its own 20-yard line on its second possession offensively of the ball game. This in the wake of a 13-place, 70-yard scoring drive by Miami. As we go downstairs to Heather for an update on the weather. Well, guys, as you mentioned, a good portion of the planning Miami has made for the game has been to brace for the weather. Larry Coker warned his players that if they plan to make weather an issue, he said, quote, don't bother coming. And players were told not to come out today looking like Michelin men. And Kirby Freeman, as you mentioned, afraid of the cold. He has had weather.com on his homepage with the Boise, Idaho weather so that he was prepared for it. And yes, they do have heated seats and heaters down here on the sideline. Uh, keeping them comfortable, Heather. Nice stuff. This is. Their backup tailback, actually, no, that's Hubbard in the ball game, and Hubbard still getting the majority of the carries out near the 40-yard line, brought down by Daryl Sharpton, but a first down on that 17-yard pickup by Robert Hubbard, who's closing in on 1,000 yards for the season. Now, and you look at this Nevada offense, they don't have the greatest talent across the board. Not a lot of skill athletes that are going to scare the likes of this defensive unit from Miami, but Hubbard is one of the players that's going to have to get involved. He's the type of back where he can pop one on you, Hubbard, and also they have McCoy and Mitchell at the wideouts. Those are really the three playmakers for Nevada. They keep it on the ground and nothing doing last time. Brought down to the 35 by Atkins. 
Atkins, the six foot four inch, 275 pound senior, voted the most improved defensive player on that side of the ball. Well, this group goes so deep up front for Miami. They roll nine, ten defenders in and out along that defensive front four, and the talent level never drops. It's just the jersey numbers that change. For Atkins, it took him a while for the light to go on. Remember, he started at the U when he was just 16 years old. Throw to pass. And he shows a little escapability, pushed out of bounds at the 43 yard line by Atkins. But Jeff Rowe gives you that dimension. And the good news, if you're a Nevada backer, is that he's been nursing that sore hamstring for most of the season. The break in between the bowl game and their last regular season game against Boise State has allowed him to become more mobile. Well, the, the break between the regular season and the bowl game is a great opportunity for many players across the country to heal up. But Jeff Rowe is not only dangerous throwing the football on the run, he's also with the threat to go ahead and tuck it. And Jeff Rowe really benefits from being four yards deep in that pistol. It gives you some depth. It gives you a head start in terms of your motion in the backfield, getting outside. Third down and five coming up for the Wolfpack. Out of the pistol offense, Rowe trying to pass. Looked like it was tipped at the line of scrimmage and caught at the 42-yard line by Caleb Spencer, the team's leading receiver, but far short of the first down, so in comes the punt unit. Interesting, David, how they talked about moving around that launch point for the quarterback row. Well, no matter how you switch your launch points, and they'll have, no matter how you move the quarterback on third down situations, those are going to be critical for Nevada, and wide receivers cannot check up their routes short of the chains. That was a mistake on third down there as a wide receiver. you got to get beyond the chains for your quarterback. Randy Shannon's defense holding once again. A high spiral. Pushing Bruce Johnson back to his own 15. Looking for the return. And nowhere to go for Bruce Johnson. Who's brought down and now it's loose. They're going to say it's a fumble. Spotting it at the three yard line. Maga. Making the big play for Nevada. Recovering the loose ball. Now Bruce Johnson. Just never could find a seam. And he was trying to get the ball north and south, but he couldn't find a seam. Finally, had to just duck with the football at about the eight-yard line. And now they're going to move it back out to the 12-yard line. Here's the call from the official. I don't think they're going to rule this a fumble. They're going to say that perhaps Johnson was down first. <laughs> Well, they're going to review the call. And they, they review every call in college football, but they're going to take some additional time to look at this. The question, I mean, I, I think his forward progress was stopped there. Now, the ball came out fairly quickly, but it's a matter of whether the officials blew the whistle dead here. Nice job by the Nevada coverage unit to strip the football. But it looks like from the placement of the football at the 12-yard line that the officials... And we did not get an announcement. The officials ruled it not to be a fumble. Right. That's exactly where Johnson was stopped with his forward progress at the 12-yard line. And it was uh, harrowing, if you're a Miami fan, to watch him dance around going east-west before he was swarmed by the pack tacklers there. Now, yeah. the ball came out pretty quickly. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is ruled a fumble. And you know, if they're reviewing this, the call on the field would have to be that it was a fumble. So I think they're taking another look to see. The officials reviewing to see, we're told, where the ball will be spotted. Right now it's at the 12-yard line, but I mentioned earlier in the show that special teams has been a bugaboo for Miami at times this year. There have been untimely mishandlings of the football on punts that have really cost them some games this year most notably maybe the Georgia Tech game here's the call yeah. 
You good lip reader, partner? I'm going to take a guess and say that his forward progress was right at the 12-yard line. It's going to be Miami football. Time out on the field. We'll take one right along with them. Back after this. Miami leading 7-0 with just under two minutes to go in the first period. As we had surmised, Bruce Johnson's forward progress had been stopped. Thus the ruling on the field. Miami football starting at their own 12-yard line. And Kirby Freeman came out with a pretty hot hand. Led them down the field to the game's first score. You can really see a difference in his leadership. Since being assigned to the starting quarterback job, he knows he's the man coming in now. Hands it off to James. And Tavares James going to be stopped up right around the 10-yard line. Well, two teams rich in football tradition take the field as John David Booty and USC take on Mike Hart and a Michigan team that has reached the Rose Bowl in three of the past four years. The granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl game presented by City on ABC Monday at 4.30 Eastern. Also available on ABC HD and ESPN Radio. Catch every BCS game on ESPN Radio. Boy, Michigan seems to provide a lot of thrills in that Rose Bowl game. Well, and the Wolverines had a tough time stopping the Ohio State wide receiver group, and I think that may be the case with USC. Smith and Jarrett, a big load to handle. James again stopped up right around the 10. Jason DeMars leading the tacklers. And it'll be third down and long coming up for the Hurricanes. That defense of the Wolfpack, very opportunistic. Well, they have a couple very talented defensive ends with J.J. Milan and Eric Clark. A very strong and stout nose guard sitting inside with Matt Hines. And it's very evident here in the first quarter that the Wolfpack, they're going to make Kirby Freeman throw the ball. They're bringing free safety, strong safety, up into the box, playing close to the line of scrimmage. They're going to put the game on the arm of Kirby Freeman if they can. A four-receiver formation for the Hurricanes. On third and long, they're trying to... It looked like they were trying to set up the screen, but Freeman throws it out of bounds. And a late flag. Looks like this one's going to be grounding. Well, he did not get outside of the tackle box, and if he, if this is grounding, it's going to be a safety. He was in the end zone when he threw it. Well, taking another look. Kirby Freeman, I do believe he was trying to set up a screen. He sold pass and retreated a couple steps, like you would see on a screen pass. And he threw the ball away, I think, too quickly. Didn't sell it to the referee as well. And that's going to be a safety. Two points for Nevada. So the first quarter coming to an end on a very interesting play. One that goes against the Hurricanes. Well, help decide the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year. Go to ESPN.com. Search Pontiac to determine which school will win the $100,000 general scholarship fund contribution courtesy of Pontiac. A lot of riveting plays during the course of this very compelling college football season. But uh, what do you make of that last safety? Well, they were, they were trying to set up a screen pass to the left side. Kirby Freeman got back to five steps depth sold the pass and then he retreated a couple extra steps to free himself up to throw the screen pass didn't like what he saw but he has to remember he's number one in the end zone and number two if you're not outside the tackle box then you can't throw it into the fourth row that's not going to sell anybody and it, it sure as heck didn't sell the referee and now they have to kick off from their own 20 yard line with just seconds remaining in the first period d'angelo wilson one of the leading kickoff returners in the nation. And one of the top returners in the Western Athletic Conference back for this kick. And Wilson going to get an opportunity. Has a couple of blocks. And Wilson with a nice return out beyond the 35-yard line to the 37-yard line. And that's the end of the first 15 minutes of play here in the MPC Computers Bowl of the 29-yard kickoff return. 7-2, to two, Chris Salt's team hanging in, not intimidated by the Mighty Canes. You're watching the MPC Computers Bowl on ESPN. And 
welcome back to Boise, Idaho, and the MPC Computers Bowl. Nevada trailing Miami 7-2, but the Wolfpack with possession of the football at their own 37-yard line after Miami had to kick after surrendering that safety. First down and 10, and Randy Shannon's defensive unit back out on the field for the Hurricanes. Hubbard takes the handoff, brought down just beyond the 40-yard line by John Beeson. He picked up four on the play, and uh, Randy Shannon, we mentioned, is the incoming head coach at the University of Miami, former player at the University, uh, Miami native out of Liberty City, Norland High School, coached uh, actually with Jimmy Johnson up the road in uh, Davie uh, with the Dolphins for a few years and then has been the defensive coordinator for the University for the last six seasons. Yeah, there's no argument one of the best coordinators offensively or defensively in college football 2001 national title year for the Hurricanes he won the Frank Boyles Award for being the top assistant in the country second down in six Hubbard brought down after a gain of about one Sharpton and Kenny Phillips making the stop that is a very hard hitting linebacking crew led by Sharpton Beeson and good and just great athletes at all three levels for Miami and when you talk about Randy Shannon and his prospects for the coming years a lot of talent to return in fact you'll have Beeson Sharpton and Gooden all back with some talented youth behind that front line unit Daryl Sharpton number 50 freshman All-American out of Coral Gables High School third down and five coming up for Nevada Spencer in motion and Rowe is going to be sacked back at the 38 yard line by Kareem Brown Brown the 6 4 315 pound senior makes it fourth down coming up and the third it's another three and out uh, it's just amazing to see the athletes along the front four for Miami I mean if I'm a head coach and I'm my team's lining up against the Hurricanes I don't let them look down the field during warm-ups and take a look at that <laughs> defensive front a lot of guys that make the uh, the all airport team for Miami look good in the airport coming off the plane Bruce Johnson back again for the punt calling for the fair catch at the 24 yard line now, Kirby Freeman is making his fourth consecutive start as quarterback at Miami he feels that there's more in his future than just being the understudy for Kyle Wright we'll talk more about that on the other side back everyone in Boise Idaho for the MPC computers bowl I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie and Heather Cox down in the field Miami leading Nevada seven to two here in the second period little receiver screen set up this is Sam Shields, and Shields is brought down immediately at the 25 as we go down to Heather. Well, Nevada very frustrated offensively, just 47 yards, and you could tell the frustration with Jeff Rowe, the quarterback, came off the field. Coach Alt definitely got in his face. They were sparring, exchanging words quite a bit. Coach Alt definitely not happy with the performance so far. Now, he did tell us yesterday, guys, that Jeff Rowe's performance was the X factor, critical to Nevada's success, and Jeff Rowe told us that he's finally gotten used to absorbing Coach Alt's hit, so I don't think it'll affect him too much as they yell at each other guys yeah, he says uh, Heather that nobody will ever yell at me as long and as loudly as my head coach does Freeman off the play fake incomplete and almost intercepted in and out of the arms of Lance Leggett actually hit him in the face mask it'll be third down coming up for the Hurricanes but uh, I don't think there was anything wrong with that pass. My, maybe a little hot, David, but catchable. Well, Kirby does tend to deliver the ball a little hot from time to time, and I think he would just deliver the ball through some traffic there, and Leggett had trouble picking up the football, and the ball got on him quickly. And, and to be fair to it, Leggett did not have great vision through the linebacker and the front of that defense on the pass delivery. Kirby Freeman trying to make an impression not just in this game, but beyond for next year. Downfield. And it's incomplete at the 40-yard line. Good coverage by Joe Garcia. He was working against Sam Shields in his fourth down coming up. So the Wolfpack defense responding in that sequence. And a three and out for the Hurricanes as Brian Monroe comes in to punt. <laughs> 
Uh, we were told that the Hurricanes were going to open it up, and they certainly have. They put a lot of trust on Kirby Freeman's shoulders early in this football game. And I like it. I like Miami taking some shots. That's one thing they haven't done offensively throughout this year. They have not taken enough shots on the deep balls. Brian Monroe averaging 42 yards per punt on the season. Booms this one. Back to D'Angelo Wilson all the way back at the 24. And he is piled up at about the 29-yard line. A five-yard return on a 52-yard punt. Well, Chris all told us that the turning point of the season for Nevada was when they were 3-3, three and three, and they went out to Hawaii. But Alt is really a great story in his own right. His third stint as the head coach. They became bowl eligible week nine, shutting out Idaho. And then they lost against Boise State at home. And that in itself holding a lot of motivation for this team coming in Nevada as they look to reinvent themselves. Alt said that he was very disappointed in the senior leadership in that game. Looking for atonement against Miami. First down and 10. Rowe with the play fake. Going to keep it himself. And Rowe got himself about four yards before being pushed out of bounds. Daryl Sharpton in pursuit. And there's a flag on the Nevada side of the field. May have pushed him out a little bit late. But a great gesture right there by Kareem Brown to go over and to put a pat on the hat from Jeff Rowe. Now, Jer Daryl Sharpton, I believe, delivered a hit late out of bounds on Rowe. We talk about the pistol, the play action. Pistol can get the quarterback outside efficiently. Not a good job by Sharpton pulling up. I mean, Rowe's not going to pick up additional yardage there. Wasn't a violent hit. Just a push with the left hand. You know, you see that as a trend now in football, even at the pro level, where those borderline calls, they are always going to go way overboard the other way to protect the quarterback. Well, and defensive teams have to know that at the college and the NFL level. The rules are the rules are headed that way. I mean, if anything, they're, it's each year goes by, they're trying to protect the quarterbacks more and more. Fake handoff to Hubbard. And it's incomplete at the 39-yard line. Great jump on the ball by Randy Phillips. Working against Mike McCoy, but Phillips with a great play that time, the six-foot sophomore. Now, there's no doubt that Jeff Rowe and this Nevada team, they line up against some good teams in the WAC. They're seeing Boise State and a show up down in the Fiesta Bowl against Oklahoma tomorrow. But this is the first look that Jeff Rowe has had at cornerbacks like the cornerbacks at University of Miami lines up. I mean, these guys break on the football. Some of the best athletes you'll see across the country in college football in the secondary. And that was a heck of a break by Phillips. There's Glenn Sharp on the other side. Brandon Merriweather also in the secondary. A bunch of talented, interchangeable parts. Under pressure, Rowe gets it off to Hubbard. Nothing doing right there. Glenn Cook, little fricassee on the tackle. As Cook comes up with a nice stop for the Hurricane defense. Uh, Baraka Atkins, the defensive end, took this play just right out of its timing with pressure on the quarterback. The front four gets so much done for you on defense. It makes you so much more effective as we take a look at Baraka. Baraka with uh, friends in high places. Uh, his dad is actually the mayor of Sarasota, Florida, a place where he went to high school. His brother plays center for Florida State. Third down and long coming up for the pistol offense. Rowe with his finger on the trigger, patiently, with time, taking a shot up top. And it's incomplete at the 15-yard line, and now a late flag. Mike McCoy was working against Brandon Merriweather. And the official uh, taking a while before throwing that flag. Pass interference, 19 on the defense, the 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That goes against Merriweather in the Hurricanes. Merriweather made his break, and he was positioned where he was supposed to be as a safety, played this ball perfectly, but at the end of the play, he's going to run across the face. Was that uncatchable? Of the receiver. Well, I don't think you can call it uncatchable because he cut off the receiver. It might have been uncatchable, but a tough... That's a tough ruling for the officials if Merriweather cuts across the face of Mike McCoy. I thought 
thought Merriweather almost had a better shot at catching it than, than McCoy did. First down and 10. Hubbard inside the tackle is brought down at the 40 yard line by Kareem Brown and John Beeson. We spoke of John Beeson a little bit earlier, David. Beeson admits that he will submit his NFL draft projection papers and wait for the feedback to decide on whether he's coming back next year to play for head coach Randy Shannon. Uh, one of the young stars in college football, that linebacker. Terrific speed. You talk to defensive coordinators, they always mention the speed of this outfit. I think John Beeson's going to be best served to return, especially with the injury problems he's had throughout the course of the season. Second down and nine coming up for the pack. Hubbard again. And Hubbard stopped up at the line of scrimmage just shy of the 40 yard line by Daryl Sharpton. Joe Paterno returns to the sidelines, folks, on ESPN New Year's morning. As Paul Puzlesny, Dan Connor, and a stingy Penn State defense take on Eric Ainge and the Tennessee Volunteers. Coverage begins at 9.30 a.m. Eastern with College Game Day built by the Home Depot. The Outback Bowl on ESPN Monday, part of Capital One Bowl Week, and also available on ESPN HD and ESPN Radio. Be nice to uh, get the lampshade off our head tonight and uh, wake up tomorrow morning and watch the game, David. You talk about big-time defenses, <laughs> Penn State. Third down and long coming up for Rowe under duress and sacked back at the 47 yard line by Kareem Brown who's having an outstanding night so far tonight. Brown was second team all conference this year in the ACC and good pressure he was helped out by Campbell. Uh, Kareem Brown is very versatile it plays inside and outside up front for the Hurricanes eight and a half sacks on the season as an interior defensive lineman those are big numbers with all the traffic that he faces inside and again Jeff Rowe getting a taste of this defensive front four for Miami. Bruce Johnson back for the punt for the Hurricanes landing his feet at the 10 yard line and all in the fair catch at the 11. 46 yards on the punt nothing on the return the Hurricanes with the lead 7 to 2 when we come back to Boise. Back at Broncos Stadium, you know, the education of Kirby Freeman has been an interesting one. They tried all year to get him in in certain situations and had a tough time doing it. He became the starter four games ago, and he plans on competing for the number one job next year against Kyle Wright. Handed off to James out to the 15-yard line as we catch you caught up with the Sports Center 30-30 update. All right, Mark, the NFL playoff picture clearing up. Look at the Gatorade bath that Eric Mangini, the Jets, gets. He's in the playoffs. So, too, are the Chiefs because the 49ers defeated the Broncos in overtime. Nick Saban is not going to the playoffs. The question, is he going to Alabama? Report says he's going to be offered 40 to $50 million. Crimson Tide, no qualms about making him the highest paid coach. We'll see what he does, Mark. Sports Center after the game. Boy, with, with that kind of money, Reese, when you write a check, the bank bounces. <laughs> Freeman completes it at the 27-yard line. Greg Olson, the team's leading receiver, and the All-American junior. 40 to $50 million? I mean, we thought two, three million dollars a year over the course of the last four or five years, money was starting to get big wow. for coaches at the college level. That's like, those are, they're paying that type of money in the offseason to pitchers. Unbelievable. In the yeah. big leagues, in baseball. First down and 10 coming up. Those are the ball at the 26-yard line after the 12-yard pickup. They talked about trying to get Greg Olson more involved offensively. Freeman sacked, and he threw it, and a flag comes down. Might have a hold on the play. Jason Fox, the right tackle, and that's what the call is against Miami. That defensive front for the Wolfpack bringing a little bit of heat out of that 3-4 front. 64 on the offense. Second down. Jason Fox returning to the lineup after missing a game, missing the finale against Boston College with a dislocated elbow. But you got a piece of J.J. Milan there. And Milan, a great story. You talk about one of the more courageous players in college football this year. You figure he'll be a factor in this before it's all said and done. 
34th sack of the season for the Lions defense. Second and 21 as a result. Freeman keeps it himself. Little to side option and out to the 22-yard line. Brought down by Jason DeMars. Let's talk about Freeman a little bit more. Became the starter four games ago. We saw him that November 4th game at home in Miami against Virginia Tech. Came in and, and showed the ability to make some plays, although he turned it over once. But he says that he plans on competing for the number one job against this guy, Kyle Wright, who has a broken thumb. They got to look there at Pirelli, actually, the backup. As it stands right now, the walk on there's Kyle Wright on the left side of the screen, but I think this is an audition <laughs> for Kirby Freeman. The offense. Miami broke the huddle with 12 players. Five yard penalty, still third down. David, you're a former quarterback. You played the position. How much can you prove? How much can you impress in one night like this in this context if you're Kirby Freeman? Well, I think it's safe to say Randy Shannon up in the press box is taking a look at his entire team, taking inventory headed towards spring practice and the quarterback position we talked about it earlier it's it's been a real problem spot for this team since Brock Berlin departed a couple years ago and I think Kyle Wright you know, he, he took a step backward this year I think that the quarterback position is is wide open going into spring and to get back to Kirby Freeman this is a great opportunity to get him himself a head up in front of Randy Sham third and 21 going up top has a man downfield and it's complete to Ryan Moore, the playmaker that they had been devoid of for most of the year, working against Walker, first down Hurricanes. A 44-yard pickup, and Freeman put it right on the money for Moore. Uh, and this was just a case of a big receiver, Ryan Moore, 6'3", 225, being strong at the top of the route. Look at him get inside Walker with his size, and then he uses his body to shield the ball from the defender. Pretty darn good ball from Kirby Freeman on the streak. They could have used more of Ryan Moore this year. Didn't start playing until that Virginia Tech game that we spoke of a few moments ago on the reverse. As his shields and the freshman right out of bounds at the 42 yard line. Well, now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. This week's question, folks. This is the most northern location Miami has ever played a regular or postseason game. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Prior to tonight, what was the most northern bowl game for Miami? How many parkas do they have in their <laughs> equipment? <laughs> equipment <laughs> I know, this, this team so used to lining up in BCS games, I'd, I'd say maybe Atlanta. <laughs> I mean, that's not very far you know, either. If they're not in Pasadena, they're in Tempe or New Orleans or right there at home at the Orange Bowl. Second down and 12. We'll get the answer to that as you illuminate that question for a few moments. It's picked off. Think about that. If you're Maga, Joshua Maga makes the pick for the Wolfpack. That is why they're one of the leaders in the nation in takeaways. The officials took away the previous turnover, which they thought was a fumble. No doubt about this one. Maga squeezing it. And the Wolfpack with the ball when we come back. ESPN College Football, the MPC Computers Bowl, is brought to you by MPC Computers, made in Nampa, Idaho, and preferred by companies around the world. ESPN Game Plan. Buy your bowl game package on ESPN.com's Game Plan Online and catch over 20 bowl games live and on demand. And Aflac, ask about it at work. Look at beautiful downtown Boise as we have a new quarterback in the ball game now. Nick Graziano. They have a special package in for him. He lets it fly, though, complete to Spencer. Caleb Spencer, the team's leading receiver, with a first down up beyond the 40-yard line. Let's go back to the turnover, which gave Nevada the ball. Now we talked about the growing process for Kirby Freeman. Go ahead and run it here. Josh Maga, the most talented linebacker on this roster for Nevada. He's going to sit inside against the curl route, and Freeman just tries to stuff the football inside. And as a quarterback, when you talk about your learning curve, you got to find the danger. 
in the secondary. You got to find the colored shirts, and on that play, Kirby Freeman did not keep track of Maga on his radar screen. Maga's third interception of the season, and Graziano, after one play, wants to talk it over with his head coach, Chris Ald, who runs that Wolfpack offense. The 19th most prolific offense in the country. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back, and tonight's game track presented by New York Life. Kirby Freeman with the game's first score on the quarterback sneak. And he gave up two coming back the other way. The safety on the grounding infraction. And then the interception to Maga a few moments ago, which gave Nevada the football at Miami's 40-yard line right now. And Nick Graziano in the ball game now quarterback for Jeff Rowe. And our Heather Cox reports from the sidelines, David, that it's not a health issue with Rowe. They're just switching things up with Graziano. No, Chris all planned to get Nick Graziano in the game. He's got a package in short yardage and down on the goal line. And they also thought they might give him a set of downs. Looked impressive on the initial play of this drive. First down and 10 from the 40. The backup tailback of the ball game, Luke Lippincott. More of a straight ahead runner brought down by Tavares Good. Second down and about nine to go. Lippincott really came on strong in the last three games of the regular season. Told of 359 yards and seven touchdowns during that span. Just enough to spell Robert Hubbard. And then comes Jeff Rowe at quarterback once again. So uh, Graziano got a couple of quick touches and back to the sidelines. And Robert Hubbard back in the ball game as well at tailback. Second down and 10. 4-12 to go in the first half. Pressure coming, and there's a little shovel pass. Hubbard. And Hubbard brought down inside the 30 at the 27-yard line. And Hubbard gets a first down for Nevada. A nice run of 13 yards, and they move the chains. Well, and this is a nice job by a right-handed quarterback with a left-handed shovel pitch. Pressure inside, moves to his right to free himself up, and we talked about Hubbard. The one player in the backfield for this offense that's a threat got a nice block from Poodwell, the tight end. First down and 10. There's the play fake. Rowe into the end zone. Touchdown! But there's a flag down back at the 30-yard line. So hold on. We'll see if McCoy's touchdown, Mitchell's touchdown stands. And for Rowe, that's his 17th touchdown pass this season. The penalty going against Tavares Good. Mitchell with his fourth touchdown catch this year and the Wolfpack taking an eight to seven lead. Uh, looks like Chris Alt's considering going for two here. I don't necessarily like that early in the game but a, a two point conversion would give the Wolfpack a three point lead. Looks like they're talking over a play for a two point conversion on the sideline. Chris Alt David seemingly keeping Miami's defense off balance and off off kilter a little bit during that last drive, bringing in Graziano at quarterback, Rowe coming back in, throwing the touchdown pass, and that's exactly what their objective was coming in. Well, it's a big part of the pistol offense, and we just got to look at the arm strength of Jeff Rowe, the quarterback. That's why he's an NFL prospect. Time out of the field, and Nevada with its first lead of the ball game, eight to seven. We'll be right back after this. Nevada leading by a point with 3.38 to go in the first half. One more look at the touchdown pass. Well, and the key was the fake in the backfield. Watch the free safety. Go ahead and freeze it right here. Merriweather really bit on the fake. And then Mitchell's going to get behind him. And that is an impressive ball from Jeff Rowe on the run. Brandon Merriweather biting on the play action from his free safety position. They're going to go for a two row. Takes it himself, but will come up short of the end zone at the one yard line. 
Good stop by Baraka Atkins. So the Hurricanes deny them the two-point conversion. And it remains 8-7 to seven with 3.38 to go here in the first half. Well, and, and I don't like going for two-point conversions, especially in the first half of a ball game, just to pick up the extra point. I think you take points where you can get them, and then in the fourth quarter, if it applies, go ahead and go for two. But that was an impressive drive put together by Jeff Rowe in that offense. You know, the shovel pass really set things up to Hubbard. And then the play action and the fake. This is a team that can really deceive you at the linebacker level because of that pistol. The quarterback sets up at four yards, running back behind him at three yards, and you have that extra time to stay with the fake. Miami was buying on defense on that play. And let's go downstairs to Heather for more. Mark and David, there is no doubt this is a very pro-Nevada crowd. Don't forget they compete against Boise State in the WAC, and Nevada feels they have home field advantage for several reasons. Yes, the fans are on their side. There's also a comfort level because they've played here so often, and also a very similar climate. Boise, a lot like Reno, so they're very comfortable in these frigid conditions. Yeah, no doubt, Heather. The flight just takes an hour from Reno, Nevada to Boise, Idaho. Bruce Johnson and Rashawn Jones back deep for the Canes. As this one will come back out to the 20-yard line. Well, earlier, we asked you our Athlon trivia question. This is the most northern location Miami has ever played a regular or postseason game. Prior to tonight, what was the, what was the most northern bowl game for Miami? I'm going to say Atlanta, just to go out on a limb. <laughs> Yankee Stadium, Stadium, the Bronx. In the Bronx. I know they don't play that one anymore. But just in case you were wondering, it was the second annual Gotham Bowl. Nebraska, Miami. What are we, 0 for 15? I'm 0 for 15. I wonder if the great Bambino <laughs> was in attendance for that football game. Hopped on the subway. First down in 10. See what Freeman can get done here with a little over three minutes to go in the first half. James on the loose. They call him Baby J. Looked every bit like his cousin Edrin running for the first down that time. Out to the 38 as we check in with Reese back in our studios. Reese. Mark, Happy New Year. Coming up on the Smith Barney Halftime Report, we'll find out in a couple of days whether there will be a fish out of water or to be more precise, a fish-like mammal out of water. And pertains to Nick Saban. The collapse in the inside bowl cans Glenn Mason. We'll talk about that and also clear up the NFL playoff picture. It's all coming up in the Smith Barney Halftime Report as we ring out 2006. See you in a bit. All right, thanks a lot, Reese, and Happy New Year to you, too. 18-yard pickup on that last run by James Freeman. Complete out of the backfield once again. And James makes it out to midfield this time, stepping out of bounds right at the 50-yard stripe. Miami's offense, uh, a rhythmic in the last drive, but looking a little bit more in sync here, David. Well, and, and the play calling changes when you get the ball outside the shadow of your own goalpost. And Miami took over on their own 12-yard line. The grounding call in the end zone on the safety. And then on the, on the ensuing drive, Miami also had some problems with poor field position. But when you get out towards midfield, things open up for a young quarterback in terms of play call. First down and 10 after the 12-yard pickup. James again, this time going to be brought down for a loss. Back at the 48-yard line, you talk about this talented freshman, James, and his work ethic, inherited perhaps in part from uh, his cousin, Edrin, who's now with the Phoenix Cardinals. Back in Immokalee, Florida, where they're both from, there's a facility that Edrin built with weights, workout room, computers, movie theater. They call it the Fun House. They go bowling there. It's got everything included. And uh, Baby J right there. Tavares uh, has the keys to the joint, so uh, he can open it up and work out whatever he wants. And it certainly looks like he's spending a lot of time there during the offseason. Charlie Jones now in to spell James in the backfield. Freeman going up top, and it's caught. Touchdown, Ryan Moore. The second big hookup between those two tonight. And he beat the best DB that Nevada has on the play, Joe Garcia. And yeah, Garcia might have gotten a push. 
on the end of this route. I think Ryan Moore might have gotten away with one on Joe Garcia. You can see and understand the exuberance of Ryan Moore when you look at the frustrations that he's endured during the season. Not getting to play until the early part of November. Because of the suspension and some legal issues, the extra point good. And that is a career-long catch for Ryan Moore. His head coach stuck with him, and it pays off paying dividends here. Well, Ryan Moore is an imposing wide receiver, and he's going to run the go route on the outside, working against one of the best cover corners in the WAC. And watch the top of the route here. Looked like he used that right arm and knocked Garcia off balance. And then the strength of Moore to take the ball across the goal line. Now look at just a little push there, but enough to get Garcia off balance. Ryan Moore got away with one. You know, David, there was a real poignant and interesting interaction between Ryan Moore and his head coach, Larry Coker, just a couple of weeks ago at the team's closing awards banquet. Larry Coker watched and listened as Moore took minutes, took a while thoughtfully thanking the head coach for sticking with him through his legal issues. You know, it's just recently that Moore got to play again, and, you know, I had a chance to ask Coker about that, and Coker said, hey, you know what? I'm not in the business of running kids off. 19, 20-year-olds deserve second opportunities, and you can only hope that Ryan Moore is making the best of his now. Well, Coker says, hey, it's always easy to kick a kid off the team. It's tough to stick in there with them. Wilson on the kickoff return. Brought down to the 37-yard line, and... Uh, Larry Coker interacting with his players prior to this game and getting some real heartfelt responses from his players. This was the scene prior to the opening kickoff. Coker getting some dap from Kirby Freeman and some of the other players. He says that his legacy will be one of, hey, I graduated players. I won 80% of my games, and I feel like he got the job done at the University of Miami. First down and 10 now. Nevada with 126 to work with. Rowe under heat got the pass off. Complete to Hubbard. And Hubbard with a smooth run down to the 45 yard line of the Hurricanes. Boy, a great moxie in the pocket that time from Jeff Rowe under duress. Well, he was a magician on this play. And he's made a couple great plays under pressure in the pocket. The shovel pass on the last drive and you know dropping the ball down to backs is very important at the NFL level. Jeff Rowe has been invited to the NFL combine. He's going to play in the East West Shrine game with his size and his ability to throw the football especially on the move. I think he's going to play on Sundays. He has the size 6'5 225 setting up the screen here. Complete once again to Hubbard. Hubbard on the move in a rush. Down to the 32-yard line with 39 seconds to go in the first half. Well, in Nevada, no hurry here. The clock stops on a first down. They've got a timeout left, but watch the timing. That's just a great feel for setting up the screen pass by a quarterback, really giving Miami the look of a pass play down the field and then dropping it off to the back. Clock running with 31 seconds to go in the half. Nevada with one timeout remaining. They set up the screen again, Hubbard again. Using his blockers wisely down near the 20-yard line. And this might be the time that perhaps they use a timeout, and Rowe calls one after the 12-yard gain by Hubbard. So Hubbard and Rowe getting them with infield position. Yeah, and I don't like that timeout at all with 22 seconds to go. You don't need to burn your last timeout. You've got a timeout because Hubbard made a nice decision to stay inside. He knew he was going to pick up the first down instead of heading for the sideline. He saw the seam, and right there, Jeff Rose should know, I don't need to use a timeout. I can go up to the line of scrimmage and snap the ball with 21, 20 seconds at the worst left in the half. That's a wasted timeout. Nevada at 8-4 and four coming in. A win against Miami would arguably be the biggest win in school history. And Chris Salt telling us before this game that at some point you got to plant your feet and take a stand and make your mark against a program the quality of the University of Miami well folks tomorrow afternoon Heisman runner-up Darren McFadden leads the Arkansas Razorbacks against the Wisconsin Badgers the Capital One Bowl on ABC Monday at 1 Eastern also available in high definition on ABC HD for more information 
Log on to ESPN.com. And, hey, what about the workings of Brett Bielema this year? <laughs> Wisconsin kind of going yeah. under the radar For nationally sure. with a very successful season. Uh, yeah, that team ranked number six in the country. Their only loss coming in a game against Michigan, and they played the Wolverines pretty tough. 28-14 loss to the Wolverines. A lot of coaches across the country deserving of National Coach of the Year honors. Of course, Larry Coker won nationally Coach of the Year in 2001 and 2002. If not for a questionable and perhaps erroneous call, might have had that second national championship. Now, using that timeout eliminates your ability to run the football. You don't have the timeout anymore, so now you got to put the ball, football up. Roll back to pass, has time. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Good coverage by Kenny Phillips, who had the best shot at catching that pass. Second down and 10 coming up. Yeah, not, not that you're going to run the ball on first down, even if you have that timeout left, but you'd like to keep a timeout so you have the flexibility to run the football later in this drive, whether it's another play or two down the line. A misfire by Jeff Rowe. He can't help but think he was trying to be safe with the football, but if you get... A ball carrier receiver caught in bounds here. You're going to have to get to the line of scrimmage quickly to clock the ball and get your field goal unit on the field. Second and ten, back to pass. Completes it, and they stop the clock. The pass complete to Poodwell, the tight end, with 14 seconds to go out of timeouts. He picked up four. Yeah, Chris Alt has coached his quarterback well in terms of decisions from the pocket. And the Jeff Rowe looked outside to his tight end. He saw a clear lane for his tight end to get out of bounds. Ball was delivered well. Rowe now third down. You might want to take a crack into the end zone so that you don't risk a tackle in the field of play. Yeah, good point. Rowe, six of his last seven passing. Rowe, the only unanimous captain that they've ever had at Nevada. Don't take a sack here. Little play fake. I thought that he threw that one away on purpose. It was in the direction of Jack Darlington. It stops the clock with nine seconds to go. Grant in on the coverage, the freshman for the Hurricanes. Well, Jeff Rose facing a front that's capable of bringing pressure on any play. And his thinking coming away from center there was, if I don't see something quickly, let's get rid of it. Make sure we get a nice, clean attempt on the field goal. Brett Jagel in. Just four of seven on the year. And Miami takes a timeout, trying to put Jekyll perhaps on ice a little bit. And don't sleep on Nevada. I watched the tape, okay, of that Boise State game. They started the game off with a trick play, an onside kick to begin the contest. Just postulating a little bit. Well, Chris Alt <laughs> has been around a long time. I mean, this is his 22nd year, and he has seen Nevada, actually overseen Nevada at the Division II level, one double A. And then, of course, the move up to Division I. But he was talking to us yesterday. He said, many coaches, you know, they leave programs and they move on. But whenever I left, I took the program with me. Yes, and did. he's one of the top five winningest coaches in all of college football. Yes. You get to count those Division II and Division I AA wins. Yeah, last season, 9-3. and three, This year, 8-4. and four. He says, yeah, I'm fortunate. But one life, one school, and... Uh, like I said, brought the program with him from Division II to Division I AA to Division I. And while he was athletic director, he uh, was uh, under the auspices of uh, 18 different programs, oversaw 18 different programs. <laughs> well, More than just football at that point, but now it's about football for him. Well, really, to his credit and his program's credit, we asked at the top, would Miami be ready to play? Would they show up? And I think the Hurricanes have shown up. They're playing with great intensity in Nevada has battled toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Jekyll's attempt coming from 33 yards out. He's two for two on this distance on the season. And he knocks this one through to being the Wolf Pack within three points with five seconds to go. So, uh, David, although you weren't fond of that timeout call when they called their last timeout, I guess ultimately things did kind of work out for them. They salvage three points from this drive well you always want to keep all your options op open and and clock offenses it can get pretty complicated at times you know jeff rowe's been around for three years if he was a first-year quarterback then hey you might want to get up there you know gather yourself 
and get a young quarterback back in the huddle and use that timeout. But not with Jeff Rowe. There's no need, need to do that. But, you know, you look at the effectiveness of this offense in the second quarter. That is really the story, I think, in this game. I mean, Nevada did not look strong early. They looked like Miami. You know, it was was out matching the Wolfpack. But those last two drives by Nevada has really gotten this team back on their feet and back in this ballgame. Yeah, for Jeff Rowe, it hasn't been an easy road at Nevada. In 2003, separated his shoulder, red-shirted, and saw the coach at the current time, uh, Chris Tormey, fired after the season. Five seconds to go here in the first half. Miami leading 14 to 11 in this Larry Coker's last appearance on the sidelines as the head coach at the University of Miami. Bruce Johnson back deep for the Hurricanes with five seconds to go. And just think about uh, this Miami program. Uh, you think about some of the guys that have left early. Roscoe Parrish amongst them. Uh, at his playmaking and Devin Hester, that those playmaking abilities. And it's perhaps a different result on the season. Maybe not a six and six year for Miami. Clock starts on the kick here. It's popped up at the 18. Johnson. And Johnson still on his feet. It was Johnson with a nice kickoff return and the ball popped out, but he was down first out to the 46. And that's the end of the first 30 minutes of play. And this the MPC Computers Bowl in Boise, Idaho. The Miami Hurricanes looking for their 10th consecutive winning season in Nevada, looking for perhaps a, the biggest win in program history. And Chris Alt uh, heating up the night. He's hot. He wants the officials' attention as we go downstairs to Heather Cox. Coach, close ball game so far. What's been the biggest puzzle you have to solve for this feisty Nevada team? Well, their, their defense, they're creating some bad plays with their, their blitz packages. They're doing a good job, I think, with that. And we've got some big plays, but we don't have the consistent plays. And obviously, we're giving them some uh, big plays uh, defensively that were characteristically we don't do that. So we've got to make sure we've got to show our defense up. And, Coach, how are you handling your motions as you lead this team for the last time? Well, you know, we're in the middle of a game right now. It's, yeah. it's, it's, just, it's a football game. My focus is there. And, and uh, so I, I'm handling that just fine. Thanks so much. We'll let you handle it, Coach. All right, Heather. Miami leading at the break as we join Reese Davis and Mark May in our studio for the Smith Barney Halftime Report. Reese, I guess winning 80% of your games doesn't get you much these days. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Welcome back, everyone, to Bronco Stadium for the MPC Computers Bowl. Miami leading by a field goal. 14 to 11. I'm Mark Jones along with uh, David Norrie and Heather Cox down in the field joining us in just a few moments. David, one of the big questions coming into this game was would Miami let go of the rope or would they continue to play motivated football? I think you'd have to say after the first half of play, they're motivated to play. Kirby Freeman was kind of all over the joint for a while, but uh, got things going late in the first half. Yeah, he had a rough time in the in the end zone, got hit with the safety, but he hit a couple deep balls down the field. And take a look early in the half here. Retreats into the end zone, throws the ball away. That's a safety. It was ru ruled intentional grounding. Then he tries to force the ball on the curl to Khalil Joan. That was picked off by Maga. But then he got settled down. And this was the second of two big balls down the field to Ryan Moore. Moore might have gotten away with the push, but I think it's safe to say we're going to see a couple more deep balls down the field to Moore. He's played the top of his routes on the deep balls very well. I think Miami will take a few more shots. Hey, but on the other side of the field, the Wolfpack out of the whack, they really came on strong in the second quarter. Uh, brought in a backup quarterback, Graziano, a little bit. He changed the tempo, and then Rowe was hot on their last scoring drive. Yeah, well, they got back into the game on those last two drives of the half, scored nine points, and most importantly, you know, their offensive line for Nevada was getting beat early. Nevada responded by doing some things. That was a great throw by Jeff Rowe, but they did some things in terms of working that aggressiveness of the defensive front of Miami against them. Some screens, moving Jeff Rowe, a, sho a shovel pass, and, and they've done some nice things offensively to get right back in this football game. All right, and now let's go downstairs to Heather. 
Well, guys, I talked to Nevada's coach, Alt, who said he was very satisfied with their passing game, the way they were able to move the ball, especially on play action. He didn't like the run game, thought they got bogged down a little bit too much against this Miami defense. Then I asked him about the quarterback switch, and he said, I just wanted Jeff to come out and watch a little bit. He'd taken a couple of sacks. I wanted him to settle down. Then I talked to Coach Alt about this possibly being the biggest win in program history if they can pull it off. And he said, how do we keep from not being focused and looking ahead? He said, it's easy. This is the biggest game of program history. We can get it done play by play, guys. All right, Heather. Miami will receive the kickoff to begin the third quarter. This is Bruce Johnson. Johnson looking for a block and brought down just beyond the 20 yard line at the 22. As we take a look at the first half statistics, three sacks by that hurricane defense. And remember, it's the Nevada defense that leads the nation. Actually, as a team, they lead the country in takeaways. Uh, you look at the rushing yards, both teams, and this is a case in a lot of bowl games, both teams deciding to come out, throw the game plans out the window, so to speak, and open things up. Larry Coker in his final game as a head coach for Miami taking a young quarterback like Kirby Freeman and allowing him to air it out in the first half of those 158 yards two big chunks came on the passes to Ryan Moore Freeman keeps it himself and he's brought down after a gain of about a yard Kirby Freeman starting just his fourth game of the season stepping in after Kyle Wright broke his right thumb against Virginia Tech back on November the 4th. Second down coming up for the Hurricanes. Kyle watching this one from the sidelines, and he has vowed to get his starting job back once he becomes eligible to start playing again after rehab. Second down and nine. Working out of the shotgun. Freeman keeps it himself. Nice little spinorometer by a little bit of time. And it's incomplete at the 40-yard line. That was Ryan Moore this time unable to squeeze it. He was working again against Joe Garcia, and it's third and long. Moore had it in his arms, too, David. Yeah, again, Ryan Moore has been able to get on top of defensive backs for Nevada and then make plays on deep balls. This time, the ball's going to be underthrown. Kirby Freeman buys some time, and a nice job by Joe Garcia. That was really one that Ryan Moore should have hung on to. But Joe Garcia, nice job as the ball arrived to reach from behind and strip the football away from Moore. Third down and nine, a trips right formation to the top of your screen for Miami. Freeman with time. And it's batted down nicely at the 35-yard line, incomplete. Jonathan Amaya knocking it down to bring up the fourth down play. Amaya. Just a freshman, played 10 games, starting six this season. Now, we've heard so much about Kirby Freeman and his ability athletically to run the football, a big arm. The one thing he's going to have to work on is learning how to throw the ball with different trajectories. An opportunity here to drop the ball out over Amaya, and he tries to throw it through the young free safety. He's going to have to work on those throws where he has to take something off the football. D'Angelo Wilson back. Leader in the whack and punt return yardage. This is going to be his partner, Garcia, near midfield at the 47 yard line, but there's a flag down at the 33. 30 yard punt. Just a 30 yard punt that time by Brian Monroe. This is a Conference USA officiating crew led by Randy Smith, the man wearing the white hat today. I'm going to try and sort this penalty out. Jeff Rowe, the quarterback for Nevada, about to take the field. No penalty on the play. First down. And let's meet the Nevada team MVP, the winner of the team's Golden Helmet Award. When I'm not in the field, you can find me at the lake, hanging out on the wakeboard behind a boat. Something about me that might surprise you is um, I'm learning how to play the guitar. After my football career is finished, I'd like to have retire in Mexico, own a little bar, fishing hut. The accomplishment in my life I am most proud of is um, helping this team turn around, going back-to-back -back bowl seasons and back-to-back um, -back winning seasons. <laughs> Save a spot for me at that fishing hut, Jeff. <laughs> down in Mexico. <laughs> exactly. First down and ten. 
Right now he's in Idaho leading his team across midfield. Hubbard with a nice run between the tackles down to the 49. John Beeson making the stop. Well, tell me something about the competitiveness of uh, Jeff Rowe. Interesting story about him and his older brother, Matt. Wanted to play basketball one day when they're both kids back home in Reno. It was winter time. There was ice out on the driveway basketball court. You know what he did? He and his brother poured a little gasoline on the ice on the driveway, lit it on fire <laughs> to melt the ice. Now that's pretty desperate. When you want a ball and play that desperately, you got to give it up to him. Second down and five. Mind you, gas wasn't 235 a gallon back then. And Jeff Rowe moved a little bit slower, not as fast as he's moving right now. And Rowe pushed out of bounds at about the 43, getting the first down for the look back. A six-yard pickup. And pushed out of bounds by Randy Phillips. Now, and, and the pistol, we've talked about it. He may have hit his head here at the end of this play. Ooh. Back of the helmet on that tartan surface just beyond the blue turf. But this pistol offense with the quarterback at four yards and the, the running back directly behind Jeff Rowe, it really has a nice effect in play action and it's really worked effectively getting him outside on the edges of this Miami defense. First and 10, a little bootleg action. A little jump pass there complete at the 40 yard line. Glenn Cook and Tavares Gooden making the stop on the play. The offensive line for Nevada really working up front and, and they're getting some help from Jeff Rowe. Jeff Rowe has been very slick in the pocket. We talked about the shovel passes. We talked about the screens, but he's shown an ability, Mark, to throw from different platforms, leave his feet, really helping out this offensive line against a tough assignment like the Miami defensive front. And taking a lot of hits in the process, too. He only missed one game this year, the San Jose State game, because of an injury. Been mostly resilient, second and seven. And Hubbard, Plowing his way down to the 36-yard line. Picked up about four. Tavares Gooden making the stop. David, you talk about road delivering from different platforms. In layman's terms, that means? Well, it, it means that as, as some quarterbacks have to throw with the same motion. I mean, we remember Drew Bledsoe straight over the top. But some quarterbacks have the ability, like a Doug Flutie, to throw the ball sidearm, to throw against his body, to leave his feet, to, to, to throw the ball at different levels through the seams of the defensive line just to get the ball downfield. And, yeah, Jeff Rowe is very crafty throwing the ball from different platforms. He's looking at a third down and three right here. Hubbard in the backfield, out of the pistol offense. Hurricanes come with a little heat. And Hubbard is going to be close to the first down at about the 33-yard line. Trying the left side of that offensive line and running over Resnick. And Manu. Robert Hubbard playing in his last game as a senior, and he was really popping the ball up inside there, running with some resolve. Came into the close game. to the first down stakes. Yeah, sorry, David. Hubbard came into this game efforting 1,000 on the season. And he also had five 100 plus yard rushing games to his credit. Got nicked up a little bit throughout the course of the season. Luke Lippincott came in to relieve him most of the way during the last three games and they're going to come up about that much short of the first down so fourth down coming up bowl game Chris Alt head coach is going to say what now well I think in this position of the field you got to go for it you don't pick up a lot punting the football you're certainly not going to try a 50 yard field goal how much do you love the decision making of Oregon State going for the win in their bowl game and Mike Riley Mike huh? Riley I, I love the riverboat gambler in him and uh, how about the last couple of days some very exciting bowl games and, and comebacks Graziano in a quarterback they have a lot of different short yardage packages in for the retro freshman it goes 6 one 2 20 Hubbard in behind him at tailback fourth down and about a foot to go inches to go Hands it off to Hubbard. And Hubbard appears to have gotten the first down for the Wolfpack. Eclipsing the 32-yard line at about the 31. And it's going to be a first down for Nevada. Well, they call this offensive line the Union. They're all card-carrying members. Lunch pail type group. And Robert Hubbard is going to hit it up in there with some strength. 
You talk about tailbacks finishing off runs. Those last two carries by Robert Hubbard, no doubt that he can run between the tackles. And Rowe is back in the ball game now. Lippincott, the backup tailback behind him. First down and ten for the Wolfpack. Going up top, has a man. And it's a four, and now it's incomplete. Dropped by Mike McCoy. Knocked out of his arms by Glenn Sharp at the last possible moment. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 69 on the defense. Six-yard penalty. Automatic first hit. Roughing the passer against Kareem Brown. Well, and this could have been a touchdown. And you hear about recoveries by defensive backs. It's one of the best wide receivers in the WAC. And what a throw by Jeff Bro from the pocket. Brown just a step late. Should have pulled off the quarterback in the pocket there. Well, that's a heck of a ball by Rowe and Sharp. How about the recovery? Oh, what a great play for a guy that missed all but two games in the 2004 and 2005 season because of injuries. And it was Sharp, remember, a few years ago that was at the center of that controversial call at the end of the national championship game against Ohio State. Yeah, I, w I would say controversial. A lot of other people's <laughs> would, people would say a bad call. First down and 10. Lippincott tries to hit it up in between the tackles. Elias Campbell making the stop for the Hurricanes. And back to that play, Glenn Sharp in the national championship game. Now this flag came one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Keep counting. Yeah, and if this is ruled incomplete, no flag, the game's over. And when people like Donna Shalala, Paul D. at Miami were evaluating Larry Coker this year, I think you got to give him credit for two national titles out of the box. Not to take anything away from Ohio State, but Larry Coker in that game, that was robbery on that call. On second and ten, Rowe under some heat, eluding harm's way and steps out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Calais Campbell at 6'8", 270 pounds, breathing down the neck of Jeff Rowe. That's a lot of breath. <laughs> that is a lot of breath. And, and, you know, to finish off that point on the Ohio State game, the national title that the Buckeyes won in overtime, you know, Larry Coker, if the Hurricanes win that football game, he wins his first 32 games as head coach at University of Miami. This is his last game on the sideline. Tenth play of the drive coming up for Nevada. Third down and five. That'll get to about the six-yard line for the first down. They like Mitchell in these type of situations. But it's Hubbard. And Hubbard has the first down and then some. It'll be first and goal for the Wolfpack. Phillips making a touchdown saving tackle on Hubbard. Picked up seven on the play. Well, and, and Kenny Phillips is one of the best safeties in the ACC. And he, he actually missed the tackle on this play. And it looked like Glenn Cook made the touchdown saving tackle. But Kenny Phillips, one of the best safeties. And it gives you an idea of the talent level of Hubbard. And Graziano in now at quarterback, David. What kind of goal line package they have in for him. He hands it off. And Hubbard this time stopped trying the left side of that offensive line. Came up against Atkins and Brown. Be second and goal coming up as Graziano goes once again to the sidelines. You know, we talked to Chris Alt yesterday and we, we asked him about the backup quarterback. We were surprised to hear it wouldn't be Travis Moore. And Travis Moore played in all 12 games this season. Had a big start in the San Jose State game. A win against the Spartans, but Graziano, you know, all lights up when he talks about Graziano. He's a big, strong kid with a big arm. We want to get him in down near the goal line. On second and goal, headed off to Hubbard. Actually, no. Graziano kept it himself and will lose a bunch of yards. Back to the 15. Atkins was not taken at all or deceived by the fake. Well, it'll be plan C now on third down and goal. Ball all the way back at the 15-yard line. Now, we talked about the defensive ends for Miami and their athletic ability, their ability to get up field vertically. 
the offensive line for Nevada almost to a man during the week talked about the challenge of going up against his front four and Baraka Atkins from time to time over the course of his career he's taken downs off but he's become a lot more consistent this year and I think he's going to be an NFL type player as he moves on in his career yeah, he was voted the team's most improved defensive player and keep in mind that he started at the University of Miami when he was just 16 years old a very precocious freshman at the time and Taraz McRae the injured player down in the field getting up now with the help of the training staff but uh, Atkins has really seen his talent come to fruition here in this senior season it'll be third down and goal coming up for Miami this defense uh, has been on the field for a long time on this drive well and, and this offensive line has been working a while here trying to punch the ball in the end zone Alonzo Durham we get a look at number 73 for Nevada they wanted to get him in the in the lineup tonight as a starter to get a little more athleticism against this defensive front he was beat by Atkins on that last play 13th play of the Nevada drive third and goal Rowe under some heat there's a flag down Rowe still on his feet Boy, Rowe ran about 50 yards before making it down to the four-yard line. Well, there's a flag back at the 12. Well, he gave up the football at the end of that run. The ball bounced out of bounds, but this is most likely going to be a hold. The Miami defense in hot pursuit, and this penalty going to be against Nevada. And if it is, Miami Illegal will most likely the decline. 70 on the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty. Replay third down. That's the first Nevada penalty of the game. Now this is an interesting call for Larry Coker because if you decline the penalty, Nevada is going to have the ball inside the five yard line. Most likely not close enough to go for it, but you don't want to take that chance. So I think Larry Coker is going to go ahead and say take the ball back and we'll give him another third down. That really is showing supreme confidence in your defense, isn't it? Well, you, know, you look at it the other way and say we don't have confidence if they decided to go on fourth down inside the five. But I think this is the right call by Larry Coker. 7-11 to go in the third quarter. Rowe has time complete underneath harmlessly at the 14 yard line to Adam Bishop who's dragged down by John Beeson aka the Beast. Voted the team's hardest hitter. And it's fourth down and goal from the 14 yard line. And in comes Brett Jacob. Made one already from 33 yards today. This one is going to come from going to place it down about the 21 yard line make it 31 yards and Jekyll just gets it inside that left upright and we are tied at 14 apiece with 622 to go they used up a lot of time on the clock the Hurricanes and the Wolfpack you're watching the MPC Computers Bowl on ESPN This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma Displays. The Hurricanes huddled up on the sidelines as they held Nevada to a field goal. After Nevada had first and goal inside the five-yard line, Nevada capping that 13-play, 40-yard drive with a 31-yard field goal by Jekyll. And we are not at a 14 apiece here in Boise, Idaho. Bronco Stadium. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie and Heather Cox down in the field uh, on the Smurf turf. You know, every time I look at that turf, I want to go swimming. <laughs> I don't know how it <laughs> Makes me want to go skating <laughs> in this weather. <laughs> Johnson back deep to receive the kick for the Hurricanes. It's going to be Johnson at the five. And Bruce Johnson chopped down at the 22 yard line. Oh, well, we got another timeout on the field. And when we come back, the guy they call Baby J, Javaris James, 
Going to try and write himself a new record. Immokalee's in the house. We'll be right back after this. ESPN College Football, the MPC Computers Bowl, is presented by Alltel Wireless. Come and get your love. Alltel. Want to choose who you call for free? Get my circles. And in part by Alka-Seltzer. Break up stomach discomfort and pain with Alka-Seltzer. And ESPN Game Plan. Buy your bowl game package on ESPN.com's Game Plan Online and catch over 20 bowl games live and on demand. Welcome back, everyone. Well, Javaris James meets in the Edgerin James Conference Room for the running backs meetings down on campus at the University of Miami. And like his cousin Edgerin, Javaris about to write himself potentially into the record book. Freeman on the move, wide open at midfield. And this could be a six shooter. Sam Shields, touchdown. Kane strikes swiftly, 78 yards. Might be easy to say, David, that this was strictly a blown and busted coverage from Nevada. That's the longest pass in bowl history. And Miami now leading by six with just under six minutes to go. Now Kirby Freeman made a move towards the line of scrimmage, and I think he pulled the secondary for Nevada up and away from the wide receiver group. And, and I think there were members of the secondary that felt that Freeman was going to break the line of scrimmage, and he pulled up at the last second and found Shields down the football field. Shields taking advantage of the injury to Darnell Jenkins early in the season and continuing to gain valuable experience. 78 yards for the score. You're watching the NPC Computers Bowl on ESPN. Under the lights in Boise, Idaho, it's the NPC Computers Bowl, and... 78 yards later, Sam Shields, the talented freshman, with a career-long catch from Kirby Freeman, gives Miami a seven-point advantage. This is Wilson on the kickoff return from the 10. Okay, and Wilson going to be stopped up shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. One more look at who bit on that touchdown pass. Well, it's going to be Jonathan Amaya. Go ahead and roll it here. And Kirby Freeman's going to break towards the line of scrimmage, and Amaya is going to come up to meet him. And no need to leave Sam Shields on that play. Chris Alt, the head coach for Nevada, in film study will call that a bust, and it was. You can't leave Sam Shields that early before Kirby Freeman breaks the line of scrimmage. And a nice job by Freeman to put a little air under that ball, make sure that he did not overshoot Sam Shields. First down and 10 coming back the other way. Kenny Phillips making a stop on Robert Hubbard. This Miami defense has only given up 17 or more points twice this season. There's five and a half minutes to go. One of the best defenses in the country against the run, only giving up 66 yards a game. But again, you talk about the problems, the struggles of the Miami offense. Uh, this defense has not received much support from the offensive unit. Now, this might be the best defensive unit in the country when you take into account the lack of production that they got from their offense. Second down and 10. Pass incomplete. And as we talk about that Miami defensive front, we would be remiss if we didn't mention it's a defensive front yeah. without Brian Pata, who was slain just days after the Virginia Tech game. And the Dade County Police have yet to make an arrest in the case. And you see the 95 emblazoned on the Hurricane helmets collectively to commemorate the talents and the love that they have for their fallen teammate, their slain teammate. Yeah, what a tragedy and, and a sobering, you know, just the sobering nature of that incident really takes the importance off football games and final scores. This has been a resilient group this year. The pass incomplete, batted down by Peleus Campbell. And this is a team that 
has paid tribute several times to Brian Pata. Following the Boston College game, the last regular season game at home in Miami, a tribute to Pata. One of the more engaging and likable personalities on that team. Yeah, and he was a heck of a football player, too. Uh, Brian Pat, I remember you know, over the last two, three seasons, whenever you met with the defensive coaching staff from Miami, they said, hey, he's our most explosive young defensive line. Here's the punt from Whiter. Sean Jones looking for an alley. And falls down back at the 34-yard line. We've seen both he and Bruce Johnson Go a little bit too much on the uh, east-west plane. 36 yards on the punt, minus six on the return. Can Kirby Freeman light up the scoreboard again like he did on the last drive? Back after this. Welcome back, and now to tonight's game track presented by New York Life. Rowe with a 27-yard touchdown pass early in the first half to Marco Mitchell. But Kirby Freeman put together a pretty good night under the watchful and discerning eye of the Incoming new head coach, Randy Shannon. A couple of touchdown passes to Ryan Moore and this one to Sam Shields. Freeman has a couple of touchdowns on his last four passes overall. And first down and 10 coming up for Miami from the own 36 yard line. Charlie Jones in the ball game now, the 5'10 junior. Lars James getting a breather on the sidelines. Pass complete at the 39-yard line. They got about five on that play. That was Lance Leggett, the 6'4 junior, a tall, imposing target. Oh, Larry Coker, yeah, he's very aware that it was the offense's performance this year that might have ultimately been his downfall. Certainly it wasn't his defense, but you know, we visited with him, Mark. He talked about the lack of a, of a big play offense. So few big plays over the course of the year, and I think they're finally getting that tonight. The deep balls down the field to both Moore and Shield. Second down and seven coming up. Jones in the ballgame running hard. Put a hat on the defender, the tackler, about a yard short of the first down. We go down to Heather. Guys, after that last series, Miami quarterback Kirby Freeman came off the field following that 78-yard touchdown and looked up to his dad, Steve, who coached him at Brownwood High School in Texas. And instead of celebrating with his dad, he looked up and mouthed, Dad, I'm freezing. Forget you taught me that, Dad. Thanks, Dad. This is great, Dad. It's, hey, I'm cold, Dad. Give me that jacket. <laughs> well, Heather, if he keeps moving that offense and he's on the move, then... It's easier to stay warm. First down and 10. <laughs> Dad probably said, get back out there and get to work. Jones stomped up this time. Right around the line of scrimmage at the 46-yard line. And Kirby had an interesting quote during the course of the week while preparing for this game. He said, everything moving in slow motion out there on the field. I told our guys they got to snap out of it, including myself. The cold weather, the mentality, the blue field, I swear. That blue field <laughs> makes it colder. How do you figure that? That is a mental edge for, for <laughs> Boise State. And we saw so many of the Boise State fans, hundreds of them in the airport, headed down to, to Tempe for the Fiesta Bowl. But it is. It's cold up here, especially when you play day in, day out, 75 to 80 degree weather. Billy Freeman doing his Michael Jackson thing. Got the one glove on on the offhand. Under duress and slipping at the 35. He was under some heat. 56 Ezra Butler leading tackler on that defensive unit dad got a little colder too uh, Ezra Butler really the finest outside linebacker on this roster and Kirby Freeman playing a little bit like a quarterback that's suffering from the cold out on the plane surface and you know, the footing gets a little bit touchier as the game moves on and the temperature drops loss of 11 on the play and the uh, Kirby Freeman's teammates will tell you that he is more of an in-your-face type of communicator than Kyle Wright, his teammate quarterback. You want to be safe with the football here. Hand it off to Jones. Charlie Jones broke one tackle, but that was about it. His forward progress Johnny is going to be marked at the 41-yard line down. with 140 to go in the third period. He gained about six on the play. And Charlie didn't pick up the first down, but he was running on that drive like a, a running back that's hungry for a few carries. Jones a junior, so he'll be one of the guys back next year for the incoming head coach, Randy Shannon. Back now to punt is Brian Monroe. D'Angelo Wilson and Joe Garcia back deep for Nevada. 
Wilson leads the Western Athletic Conference in punt return yardage. But it bounces in the direction of Garcia. So Monroe, with a little bit of directional punting there, kicks it away from him. It comes down at the 17-yard line where it's down. Well, coaching legend Bob Knight needs one more victory to pass Dean Smith and set a new career mark of 880 wins as the Red Raiders take on the New Mexico Lobos. College basketball on ESPN2 tomorrow at noon Eastern, also available in high definition on ESPN2 HD. And uh, there was a little bit of snow in the area. Hope that things get cleared up and they are able to actually play that game. I remember way back in 1975, growing up in Portland, Oregon, I saw him bring an Indiana team out to the Far West Classic during the holidays, wearing that red plaid jacket. They won it, of course, and, and the next year, in 76, they won the national title. Unbeaten, the last uh, team to do so, I believe. The pass complete to Bishop. Scott May, Tom Abernathy. Gwen Buckner. Buckner yeah. Bobby Wilkerson, a smooth shooting two guard. Kent Benson at center. First down and 10 coming up for Nevada. Boy, it's great to have uh, Bruce Clark, our producer, an Indiana guy. In the yeah, track. shocking oh. that he would recall some of those names. <laughs> like the entire starting five. It's, it's amazing the way that Bobby Knight has actually downplayed the whole potential record breaking scenario. First down and 10. Bro. Finds himself a little open real estate and lunging for the first down marker at the 42-yard line where Randy Phillips puts the hit on him. He's going to be close to another Nevada first down with 12 seconds to go in the third period. A gain of about 10 on the play. Well, it doesn't appear that the cold is affecting Jeff Rowe. And his mobility, his ability to play action, get outside, has kept his team in the football game. You like the courage at the end of this run, too, stretching the football out across the chains, picking up the first down. 12 seconds to go in the third. Little counter, and Hubbard is stopped up. Got back to the line of scrimmage, ran into the middle of the teeth of that defense. Monko making the stop for the Hurricanes, and that's the end of the third quarter of play. Miami Hurricanes looking for their 10th consecutive winning season, and Nevada looking for perhaps the biggest win in program history. All this in the last game as head coach for Larry Coker. Yes, it's steamy, even though it is a little frigid out there. The heat, tangible as we enter the last 15 minutes of play. You're watching the MPC Computers Bowl on ESPN. Under the lights here in Boise, Idaho, Lyle Smith Field, Bronco Stadium. During the fourth quarter, Nevada, first, second down and ten, down by seven points. Jeff Rowe working out of the pistol downfield, open in the middle of the field, and almost intercepted, waiting for a signal that's incomplete. Are they going to say caught? They're going to say it's caught at the 27 by Poodwell. Well, I think the sure-handed Caleb Spencer, I mean, this guy does not drop balls. He juggles it. And how about the big tight end trailing the play? Wow. Now, this could have easily been an interception. And it really detracts from the, from the fact that Jeff Rowe threw a super ball down the middle. Showed a big arm on that play. First down and 10. Throw downfield again into coverage and incomplete. Broken up by Randy Phillips. Tried to squeeze that one in there to employ, but we have to take one more look at that last reception. Well, Caleb Spencer is really an athlete that has been valuable for Nevada 
over the years. You know, the last two years had 67 grabs. His numbers dropped off a bit this year. Very unusual to see him bobble the football, but the hustle of Anthony Boudwell getting down the field and the concentration to make the catch. That was special. That sure was. Good play from the four-year starter. One of the three-team tri-captains. Second and ten. McCoy and Merchant to the bottom of your screen. Big heat and almost intercepted. Calais Campbell almost had himself a pick at the 33. Kareem Brown was bearing down. He was right in Rose Kitchen. Third down and ten coming up. Now Calais Campbell, number 81. I think he's the most dominant defensive lineman who will return next year at the college level. A 6'8", 290 pounds. There are more than a couple NFL teams that would hope that he would come out early. But he is very focused on returning, and maybe for the next two years, as we take a look at his defensive coordinator who speaks so highly of him. Randy Shannon up in the box. The incoming head coach after tonight. About a 2 of 10 on third down so far. Rocked loose. Is it caught? They're going to say incomplete. Poodwell took the hit from Kenny Phillips. And we had to wait and get a definitive word on that one because we've already seen it all. Now Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Rowe compromised his tight end a bit on this throw. The ball hung up. And you'll see on the left side of your picture, Kenny Phillips coming in, delivering a blow. Ball sat up in the in the air and looked like Pudewell might have caught that ball between his legs. He couldn't have done it again. <laughs> well, I, I, I think they may rule this to catch. I did not see the football hit the turf. Tell me he didn't catch. It hit the back of Kenny Phillips. Is there indisputable video evidence to change the decision on the field? Well, this is a big enough play where they're going to take as much time as they need upstairs to sort it out. Okay, the ball is dislodged by Phillips. Wow. It was resting on Phillips' back, and then it came down, and I think it might have fallen in between the legs of Pudua. There's yeah. the hit from Phillips. Yeah, he didn't. Pudewell did not catch the ball cleanly. Yeah, Phillips was allowed, you know, he was able to, to jar the ball loose because it was not a clean catch initially. I didn't see where the ball actually hit the turf. John Beeson, number two, is right there. He seemed like he had a temporary shot at it. Well, you're, you're screened a this bit here by Glenn angle. Cook, but it comes off the back of Phillips. That's a catch. He caught it with his two feet. That with is his, a catch. He caught it with his calves. Nevada calling a timeout, by the way. There's the hit. <laughs> I mean, you got to be kidding me. Not two on the same drive. Now remember, the first catch was with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> that is an unbelievable effort by Pudwell. It looked like it may have hit the blue turf somewhere down there. They're going to really have to slow this down. You know what, I could look at that about 10 more times. <laughs> but Prudwell, on the ensuing play, caught one that was juggled by Caleb Spencer. Like you said, he caught it with his hands. This one with his calves, potentially. And uh, you can only imagine what Larry Coker is thinking right now. It's been that type of season for the University of Miami. And one more look at the top of the play. There's the ball at the upper right. And Phillips, ball resting on his shoulder. Let's take a look. Keep an eye on his legs. There's, There's the ball. Stop it right there. You see the ball. Boy, I don't know if you could really tell if it hit. I think that was a clean catch. I never saw the ball hit the turf there. And we would have seen it from that angle. Whew. I think they're going to give Pudwell the catch. See, there were some legs. There were some limbs in the way. Let's see if this angle is any better. He has it trapped right there. Still hasn't hit. Can't tell there. Ball still in his legs. Ball still in between his socks. That's going to be a catch. There must be indisputable indisputable video evidence to overturn the decision on the field and uh, 
Now, this, this one's really, really going to be a nice one to hear. After review, ruling on the field stands. Complete pass. Wow. So it sets That's up a, a surprise. fourth and ten. That's a surprise, and we've been surprised very rarely on decisions this year by by the officials up in the booth. I thought that was a catch. I don't think there was any time where you could see the ball hit the turf, and clearly Pudwell had it between his legs. Well, Jekyll now into attempt a field goal. This one's going to be from 44 yards out. His long on the season is just 36. He has a career long of 40, so... This one from 34. This would be a career long for him. And he knocks it through. It's good. Just made it over the upright. Jekyll bringing the Wolf Pack three points closer. It really does, as the adage says, come down to a game of inches. They missed a catch by about that much a few moments ago. Back after this. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. An American holiday tradition. And welcome back, everyone, to Boise, Idaho. Miami leading Nevada 21-17. And boy, Anthony Pudwell right there, the tight end, perhaps thinking about what could have been had the officials decided to go the other way after reviewing the video it, could, we really couldn't I really couldn't tell whether that ball hit the turf or not could have been a couple very late entries into the plays of the year on sports <laughs> yes Center, yes making it just before the deadline at midnight Pontiac, game changing moment fair catch called at the 28 yard line Kirby Freeman We'll take the reins of this Miami offense now. Here in the fourth quarter, Mark Jones, David Norrie, Heather Cox down in the field. Happy New Year from all of us at ESPN to all of you at home. Well, Miami now with possession of the football. Kirby Freeman has gotten some big plays, something that has been lacking for most of the year for Miami. Yeah, well, Larry Coker talked about it. We have not been able to get the ball down the field. Three deep balls have put Miami in the lead, but Nevada's very game. It's going to be an exciting game down the stretch. And Kirby Freeman is going to have to continue to make good decisions and try to stretch the ball down the football field. First down and 10, working out of the shotgun. Handed off to James, and he's brought down at the 27-yard line. James uh, moving in on setting a new record, a freshman record at the University of Miami for rushing yards right now trying to eclipse the mark set by Clinton Portis. What do you make of his work today? Well, I think he's one of the young, talented backs in college football. You look at C.J. Spiller at Clemson, but Javaris James, the cupboard is not bare for Randy Shannon, both offensively and defensively. And James, I mean, he is the, the entire package, the full package at tailback. The, the, the compa comparison and the, the similar nature of the way he runs the football is scary. When you look back at Edger and his cousin. Second and 12, they came with a little bit of heat, and it's incomplete at the 35-yard line. Now, as the offense tries to move the ball, one of the lingering questions out there in the big picture for the University of Miami, Randy Shannon becomes the head coach after the game tonight. Who will be his new offensive coordinator? Dirk Cutter at Arizona State, their former head coach, actually attended a Hurricanes practice this week, but uh, Randy Shannon downplaying that, saying, hey, we're just friends. It's part of the coaching fraternity thing where we all kind of keep in touch. Well, I think it'll be a real key. Whoever comes in is going to have to be the type of coach that can work and turn around quarterbacks. I mean, we've seen Kirby Freeman really flash some potential tonight, but don't forget Kyle Wright, and I think the offensive coordinator is also going to specialize in coaching up the quarterbacks. Blitz coming on Freeman. They got to him back at the 20-yard line. Off the edge, D'Angelo Wilson blitzing off the corner, and it's fourth down. And Heather Cox has more on who might be the potential offensive coordinator. Indeed, guys. As you said, Coach Shannon was mum about Dirk's visit, but my sources do tell me that not only has Dirk Cutter, the former Arizona State head coach, been offered the position of offensive coordinator, but I've also been told that he is going to accept that position in Miami, and actually he and his wife will be traveling to Miami later this week. Now, the irony in all that, you guys, the vacancy 
there's a vacancy because Rich Olsen left Miami to go of all places Arizona State. Yeah, there is tremendous irony in that uh, Olsen brought in just for this year by Larry Coker to try and get that offense untracked. Well, right now, let's go to Scott Van Pelt for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Thank you, Mark. Final Sunday in the NFL brings with it drama. Eric Mangini leads the New York Jets into the playoffs. They beat Oakland, and this kick by Joe Nedney beats Denver and unbelievably gets the Kansas City Chiefs into the playoffs. Alabama really wants Nick Saban. Palm Beach Post says the Tide's going to offer him a package which could be worth up to 40 million bucks. They want to have their coach by the end of the week. Sports Center follows the game. Back to Mark, David, and Heather. Happy New Year to you all. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Same to you. First down and 10 coming up. Inside handoff, a little reverse play nicely to McCoy, who has another Nevada first down. Back to the big news that Heather told us a few moments ago. Dirk Cutter, no stranger to quarterbacking controversy coming from Arizona State. Well, but, but also he's got the background at Oregon here at Boise State. Remember, he was a head coach here for the Broncos uh, in the late 90s. And, and you look back two years. This year, granted, Arizona State had big problems with injuries at wide receiver and offensive line. But you look back two years ago, the job he did with Sam Keller and Rudy Carpenter, he's known for coaching quarterbacks. And I think that's going to be a point that they're going to really stress. First down and 10. Low packs throw firing. And it's going to be ruled complete at the 30-yard line. They're going to spot it at the 30 to Caleb Spencer. And Spencer comes up with what will be another first down, a pickup of 11. Spencer was working against Randy Phillips, and that was close enough on the sideline that we might see the officials upstairs take another look. Jeff Rowe is just relentless. And the rest of his offense really playing with intensity. That's a good call. The left knee was inbounds. I think he kept that right foot in the air long enough. To have it be ruled a catch, but you know, Jeff Rowe just keeps coming at you, and he's relentless in the way he attacks the defense with his feet and his arm. How many teams have moved the ball this well against Miami this year? Loose ball on the field. Calais Campbell knocked it loose, still loose, out of bounds. Who are they going to give it to? Uh, it's going to stay with Nevada. It'll be Nevada football at the 40-yard line. A lot of players. Had different opportunities to snatch that loose ball, but it'll stay with the Wolfpack. Now, this was really an opportunity for Miami to come up with a big turnover. Campbell had a good shot at it. Well, it was the end around to McCoy, and he's trying to field the football. You know, the temperature in the 20s, it makes the football a heck of a lot more slippery trying to handle it, especially on fumbles. And eventually the ball gets knocked out of bounds and stays with the Wolfpack. Come on, man. You played at UCLA. When was it ever called? Yeah, I never about cold, we, didn't, yeah. we didn't ever venture up north. <laughs> A couple games in Seattle. That was about it. <laughs> Second and 20. A shovel pass. And nowhere to go for Hubbard. But he gets loose miraculously. But is brought down. And this might be a face mask. There's a flag thrown as Atkins made the tackle for the Hurricanes. It's a mask. 98. Defense. Five-yard penalty the previous spot. Still second down. Now this buys Nevada not only an extra down, but five yards. And initially, Calais Campbell makes a great play. The speed and athleticism makes up for a lot of mistakes. And look at Campbell get back into the play. Cook arrived first. And then Kareem Brown, along with Baraka Atkins, arrived. There's the face mask. And Baraka Atkins in just a piece of the face gear. 11.06 to go in the fourth quarter. Sets up a second down and 15. Mitchell split to the bottom of the screen for Nevada. But they come the other way. It's complete. Down to the 24-yard line. And Mike McCoy makes the grab at the 25. A pickup of 10. 
third down and five coming up. Miami's defense was able to hold Nevada to a field goal the last time they got this deep. Time under the field called by the Hurricanes. Chris Alt trying to press the right button and Larry Coker trying to pull the right string when we come back. ESPN College Football, the MPC Computers Bowl, is presented by Alltel Wireless. Come and get your love. Alltel. Want to choose who you call for free? Get my circles. And in part by NPC Computers, made in Napa, Idaho, and preferred by companies around the world. And the all-new 2007 Wrangler Unlimited, a new species from G. Welcome back to Boise, Idaho. Miami taking on Nevada. It's the ACC against the WAC. Third down and five for the Wolfpack at Miami's 25-yard line. Throw patiently, waits for the snap. And Hubbard runs it up between the tackles. That's going to be short of the first down. A fourth down coming up. McCray making the stop for the Hurricanes. And you look at the point spread right now. Four. They went for a two-point conversion early in the game. Now that may come back to ultimately haunt them in the second quarter. This is when they tried for the two and yeah, got they, none. They led eight to seven there and went for two to make the lead ten to seven. But you know. Until you get deep into the fourth quarter, you really don't need to get greedy for the extra point there. It looks good. It, you're leading by a field goal, but but no need to do that. And nothing wrong leading nine to seven. Jake over the career long today at 44, three for three. Make it four for four. And that's a bowl record with his fourth field goal. And Nevada within one point of Miami. It's not often that a team scores more than 17 against the Hurricane defense, the fifth best defense in the nation. Don't forget, coming up on Monday, 4.30 Eastern time, number eight USC taking on number three Michigan, John David Booty and Michael Hart. The team's going head to head, the granddaddy of them all. Rose Bowl game presented by City on ABC, Monday at 4.30 Eastern time, also available at ABC HD and ESPN Radio. Catch every BCS game on ESPN Radio. And uh, throughout the years, this has been one of the real riveting games. And we talked about all the lineups and the, the matchups on the offensive and defensive lines and the <laughs> secondary receivers. <laughs> Go ahead, partner. Go to work. Well, you're going to have to, you're gonna have to help me a little here. Now, the fight song, keep in mind, I'm an ex-UCLA player. I think I think I think this is a no-brainer right here, but then you look at fight song, you gotta give it to Michigan. Oh you do? Yeah, I think you have to. You stadium, I mean, there have been Olympics played here. Olympics at uh the Coliseum in Los Angeles, and then the uniforms, probably the best in, in college football. Amazing blue, huh? Amazing blue, along with the helmets. I mean, the uniforms, you got to throw the helmets in. 2-2. Two, two. I disqualify myself from anything with color schemes. I'm partially colorblind. Let's check in with Scott Van Pelt back in our studio. Scott? Mark the Sunday Best presented by Alltel Wireless. Who had a better day than Kansas City? Not only did they beat Jacksonville, they needed a whole bunch of help to get in the playoffs. They got it. Cincinnati, Tennessee, and Denver all lost at home, two of them in overtime. So KC's going to the playoffs, and they're playing Indianapolis, and LJ might have a feast against that cold run defense. First down. All right, Scott, and back here it's going to be Miami ball at the 35-yard line. Kirby Freeman has gone the distance in this game, making his fourth start. This is the last appearance for Larry Coker on the sidelines as a head coach of the University of Miami. And uh, see what they can get done on this drive. Kirby Freeman led them to what proved to be a game-winning drive against Boston College in their last regular season game. James with nowhere to go that time. Against the Wolfpack defense swarming at the line of scrimmage. Butler once again making the stop for the Wolfpack. A loss of five on the play. You know, zone read and then 
Kirby Freeman elects on the give to Javaris James, and that is not the kind of play you're looking for. Games are won and lost on these types of drives. A one-point game, less than nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. You don't want a negative play on first down to put you behind the chains. 8.34 to go. Second and 15. Down the middle of the field, Olsen complete. Greg Olsen, the All-American for Miami, with a key first down, giving them breathing room into Nevada territory at the 37-yard line. That's the guy that they've been scheming to get free most of the night. Yeah, where has he been? The All-American. And this might be the best throw from the pocket I've seen all year long from a Miami quarterback. He gets set in the pocket, steps up with authority, and just delivers the ball perfectly in stride to Olsen in the window down the field. That's a big play by Kirby Freeman. Olsen, one of the real leaders on this team. It was the Wednesday before the Virginia Tech game that he called a players only meeting, trying to get the troops on the same page. First down and 10 for the Hurricanes. Freeman under heat. And sacked back at the 48 yard line. Butler once again. <laughs> Lose some valuable field position as well with that 736 to go in the fourth quarter. Boy, what a great story Ezra Butler is. Grew up playing cricket and soccer in South Africa. He learned football pretty well, though, too. Yeah, interesting background, but give credit to Nevada and the defensive game plan. I mean, Larry Coker at halftime, he visited with Heather Cox, he talked about the pressure package. They've been outnumbering Miami at the line of scrimmage, negative plays. A one-point game. Nevada couldn't ask for more. Second and 21 after the sack. They give it to James. And James gets it back to the 44-yard line. And let's uh, go inside the personality profile of Butler. If I could meet anyone in the world, it would be Bob Marley because I respect him so much. Something su about me that might surprise you is I'm a big teddy bear. After football, I want to go back to South Africa and help out with AIDS and all the homeless kids back home. <laughs> what a wonderful uh, and admirable ambitions for Butler. Big teddy bear. He doesn't look like a big teddy bear when he brought down Freeman. Ask Freeman about that. Third and 17, and Miami calls timeout. They have one remaining. I like a guy who can show a softer side, Mark. We'd like to see a little more out of you <laughs> in that department. Well, you saw the way that Butler looked as we spoke with him earlier. There's the picture in the media guide. Kind of a Which one goes on the resume, right? <laughs> well, it depends what you're seeking employment for. Yeah. 6'2", 248, a junior. This defense, you know, all the talk was of the Miami defense coming into this game, but, you know, the Nevada defense has come up with some timely plays in this ball game. A team that leads the nation in the takeaway margin, turnover margin. And they led the nation in turnover margin for a good deal of the 2006 season. And the four turnovers against Boise State in the last game of the season against the Broncos and that that game was over in Reno before many of the fans were able to get situated they talked about the turning point of their season being in that Hawaii game they kind of battled it back from a huge deficit Moore came in a backup quarterback the defense really stood up and galvanized and came together shut Hawaii down for most of the second half before losing a close one by seven points and then they went on that uh, you know there was a five game winning streak before the final game loss against Boise State. Well, we saw that Hawaii outfit last week in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Colt Brennan, June Jones' offense. Third and 17 for the Hurricanes. They dial up a little pressure on defense. Downfield Freeman, and it's incomplete at the 10-yard line, intended for Ryan Moore, who's been his favorite downfield target tonight. But it's fourth down coming up, and Nevada potentially will get a hold of the ball with 6.14 to go. Now, it looked like Ryan Moore quit on this ball a bit. He might not have read it off the hand of 
of Kirby Freeman very well. And again, Devin Walker down the field. Couldn't get his eyes back to play the football. If Ryan Moore runs through that route, he might have a chance to bring the football in. Ryan Monroe looking for a good punt here. See if he can try and get this one inside the 20. He's going to high pooch it almost, and uh, it comes down at the 14-yard line. D'Angelo Wilson called for the fair catch. 31-yard punt, and now here's tonight's Subway Fresh Fat. Nevada has never been shut out as a Division 1A member going back to 1992, running the nation's longest scoring streak at 316 games. The last shutout loss was all the way back in 1980. They lost 10 nothing against uh, Weaver State. That's record scoring streak stretches all the way back to the time when the Wolfpack played in the Division 2. First down and 10 for Nevada. On the brink, perhaps, here with under six minutes to go of one of the biggest wins in school history. Hubbard, between the tackles, gains a couple. Down by one point with 5.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Well, if you're Miami, you would think you would have a comfort level with your defensive unit out on the field. Number four in the country gets the run, a top five defense. When you look at scoring points against, but the way that Nevada has moved the ball tonight, the way that Jeff Rowe has changed things up, they can't get comfortable against this offensive group. Nevada with 228 total yards so far, and second down and seven. Rowe looking to pass. The out pattern complete to Spencer. Caleb Spencer and Rowe have that special bond, that special chemistry. Randy Phillips defending on the play for the Hurricanes, and it's interesting that Spencer said some nuptials this past summer, got married. Jeff Rowe uh, jumping on the Iron Bird and flying all the way out to Hawaii to be present at uh, his good friend's wedding. Spencer hailing from the great island of Oahu and very tough to cover. Not a speed guy, but one of the best slot receivers on the West Coast. And Jeff Rowe showing that he can throw the ball from the pocket as well as on the run. Third down and one coming up. Bootleg action. Rowe made a nice move and got the first down out of the 30-yard line. Stopped on a dime and didn't leave the Hurricanes. Not a penny of change. A missed tackle on the play by Merriweather. And Glenn Sharp. A gain of eight on the play for the Wolfpack, who keep their drive alive. Now 38 career starts. 39 if you count tonight in the bowl game. Jeff Rowe playing for Chris Alt. He's been through a lot. You know, going back to the year before Chris Alt came back as a head coach, took a lot of big hits, a severely separated shoulder, but what a move to get upfield and move the chains. First down and 10. They try to reverse again to McCoy. This time, nothing happening. Made it back to the 30-yard line. The line of scrimmage will be second down and 10 to go. McCoy, the six-foot sophomore. Up front for Miami. Atkins, Brown, Campbell. Amongst the key cogs up front for the Hurricanes, second and ten coming up. This very much like the, the Boston College game for Miami that we watched again a couple of days ago in studying videotape. Uh, it was up to the defense once again in the game's defining moments. 4-10 to play. Spencer in motion at the bottom of your screen. And now stops and sets. Pressure on the back side. And Rowe is going to be sacked back at the 21-yard line by Baraka Atkins and Kareem Brown. Kareem Brown putting a little bit of muscle in his hustle and showing us his. Now Randy Shannon, the head coach to be, dialing up a corner blitz. An extra man from the weak side. And with numbers, this defensive front gets that more effective. Now look at the speed by Atkins. Closing on the quarterback. He is a monster. Kareem Brown as well. Third down and long. 18 to go. Rowe escaping harm again. Breaks another tackle. Going to try and do it himself. Jeff Rowe. He's going to be stopped at the 33-yard line, about six or seven yards short of the first down. Glenn Sharp finally making the stop. Rowe picked up 12 with three minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Now, this is a situation 
in, in regular season where there's no doubt you punt the football away and Chris Salt's going to make the right move here. If there was ever a time where you'd go against you know, conventional thinking, it would be in a bowl game, but not against this defense of Miami. I think you got to punt the ball away and trust your defense to stop Miami on downs. And if you're the Hurricanes, you're on full alert for a fake in this situation. No doubt. And Miami calling a timeout to think it over a little bit on fourth down and six as Zachary Whited came in to punt. Bruce Johnson thinking about just squeezing that ball and hanging on. You're watching the NPC Computers Bowl on ESPN. Welcome back. And here's tonight's game track presented by New York Life. Ryan Moore faced adversity all season and rounding into form tonight with a 52-yard touchdown catch, one of a couple long plays that he's connected with Kirby Freeman. Sam Shields with a touchdown reception as well. Jake, meanwhile, with a bowl record, four field goals tonight. And that's where we stand right now, 21 to 20. 2.35 to go. Miami is out of timeouts right now. Nevada with two remaining. Yeah, keep in mind with two timeouts that if they can stop Miami on downs, they'll have over a minute left. Bruce Johnson watches this one bounce. And Hurricane players stay clear of the ball, letting it roll all the way down to the 18-yard line with 2.23 to go in the fourth quarter. Larry Coker coaching his last game as head coach at Miami. And what a run it's been for him. Six years, a national championship. Made the finals in his first two years there, actually. Three BCS Bowl games, six bowl appearances, three consecutive conference titles, and the coach of the year back in 2001, and had a chance to ask him what he thought his legacy would be. And, uh, you know, he said it's about, you know, graduating his players, caring for his players. You know, guys like Ryan Moore, who he gave a second opportunity to, and right now showing him that uh, it was it was worth it. And he feels that Ryan Moore gets it now, as do a lot of the players that he coached. Well, and when you look at that record, his legacy is football games he won, along with the graduation rates, nothing short of astounding. 59 and 15 coming into this football game. And players have already graduated, actually, this month. And after the run, Nevada now going to call a timeout as Javaris James ran it into the line. Nevada with one timeout remaining. And comparatively speaking, here's a look at how some of his peers did during that time period. Well, you look at Miami in the prior six years to Larry Coker arriving. You know, Larry Coker won seven more games in the prior regime under Butch Davis. Now, Butch Davis did not take over this program in the same shape that it was when Larry Coker took over, but... I mean, 59 and 15, you win a national title. You have, you know, just just an alarming result against Ohio State the second year when you're pursuing a national title. We talked about the graduation rates. You know, he, Larry Coker's team this year graduated nine players on this team before they even played their first game. Nine players since. Yep. And you go back to a year ago, Mark Jones, this is an astounding statistic. He graduated all 21 players off the 2005 team, the highest number of any school in the country well you can look at some of the predecessors to Larry Coker you talk about Jimmy Johnson Schnellenberger Dennis Erickson Butch Davis each of those previously had a bit of an edge to them but you know what Larry Coker might be as likable as any maybe even more so as Randy Shannon gets set to inherit the head coaching position at the University of Miami. Well, there were those across the country that said, hey, if you don't like the direction of the program with Larry Coker, then how can you hire from within? I think uh, time will tell just how good Randy Shannon can be. Second and nine. Miami trying to keep this drive going and burn some clock, and Nevada going to burn its last time out as James takes it out shy of the 20, stopped up short at the 19-yard line. Javaris James... Uh, Still looking to eclipse Clinton Portis's mark for freshman rushing yards. Uh, Chris Alt playing the clock perfectly here. He he let the time roll after the change of possession, which is the right thing to do. And then he used the timeouts on first and second down. The clock will roll after the third down play. It's just a matter of whether Miami has the confidence in Kirby Freeman. Do you want us to burn a and and the. You know, if they want to roll the dice here and throw the football and try to end the game, or do they run the ball and risk giving the ball back to Nevada with over a minute left in this football game? And remember, D'Angelo Wilson leads the Western Athletic Conference in punt return yardage. He's a dangerous punt return man. And 
Miami's fortunes have not been all that great in close games this year. They did win two close ones against Houston and Duke, but then losses against Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, and at Maryland following. And that Georgia Tech was really the defining moment. That if, if Miami wins that game, they control their destiny on the way to the ACC championship game. And the defense played well in us. And the defense scored on the first possession, a hit by Calais Campbell, Cook picked up a fumble and scored. But the offense just did not show up. And, and then down the stretch, Miami continued to have problems on the offensive side of the football. Fourth quarter, 148 to go. Hurricanes with the ball, third down coming up. And about nine to go. Three receiver formation for the Hurricanes. Low snap for Freeman, who's going to run it on a predetermined run. And he's short of the first down at the 22-yard line. And it's fourth down coming up for Miami. Well, the officials are indicating before this drive that Nevada had two timeouts. And it looks like they had three timeouts left in the quiver. Regardless, and Nevada's getting the ball back here with well over a minute to go. And, and you look at the, the play calling there by Miami. Tough to start turning things loose inside your own 20-yard line with a young quarterback. Well, once again, it's going to rest in the hands of the defense. And Brian Monroe, who needs to come up with perhaps his best punt of the year. It'll only take a field goal for a Nevada win here. And Jekyll establishing his career long already tonight with a 44 yarder. Don't forget, Sports Center is coming up next. A look at the NFL playoff picture who's in, who's out. Nick Saban, will he be going to Alabama or not? Head coach of the Dolphins right now and a preview of the granddaddy of them all the Rose Bowl between USC and Michigan Now both teams without timeouts remaining There's a look at Brett Jekyll they got to get him into field goal range and Brian Monroe is going to set up on about the six yard line for Miami Monroe with a pretty healthy average of a, right around 42 yards per punt on the season. He needs a clutch one here. A low snap. And he gets a fortuitous roll. It takes a hurricane bounce. It'll be down at about the 37-yard line. And they're letting the clock run. Which is a good move, you would think, by Miami. Well, and as soon as they whistle the ball ready for play here, the clock's going to run again. Remember, the rule change this year, change of possession, the clock rolls. So Nevada and Jeff Rowe, they see they're coming out on the field. They've got to be ready to go on the first count. The referee's going to spot the ball. He's going to spot the ball. He's going to get clear back behind the backfield, and then he'll whistle the ball ready for play. And it looks first like down. Jeff Rowe will be ready to go. Yeah, first down and 10 from the 37-yard line. Nevada trying to make an indelible mark on its program with a win here against Miami. Rowe firing. Spencer can't squeeze it at midfield. It's incomplete, defended nicely by Randy Phillips, who broke it up. Now Spencer ran a nice route, and that ball was just delivered a, a yard or two inside. Spencer almost able to come up with it. And as a quarterback here, you want to make sure you can't take a sack. I mean, he's still got over a minute left in this football game, but you take a stack and you lose precious seconds. You also want to choose receivers down the field beyond the chain so, so that you always have the clock stop. Second down and 10 coming up. Well, we're given time. And it's complete at the 47-yard line to Poodwell, who has been clutch for Nevada tonight. Man, you can't clock the ball here. You have to run a play. And this is a, a situation, even with the clock running, you could run the football here. Third and one. And they get the first down. 
Hubbard brought down by Campbell across midfield at the 48 yard line. The clock of factor, Jekyll keeping warm on the sidelines. That's a nice decision by Jeff Rowe and a lot of confidence in the big guys up front. You get stopped short of the first down and you'd lose about 20 seconds. Nice job by Nevada to stop the clock. Rowe looking downfield. He's going to run. And Rowe knocked out of bounds. At the 36 yard line still on the fringes of field goal range as Rowe picks up 12 clock running with 31 seconds now remaining. How, stop how about the play at the end of this run by Jeff Rowe to make Chavez Grant miss. Watch number 24. Let's see if we can go and go ahead and freeze it right here. Chavez Grant wants to keep him from the sideline to keep the clock moving. Remember this is short of the chains and what a job to beat Grant with the move and get the ball out of bounds. Jeff Rowe, nice move. 31 seconds to go. The Canes defense needing one big sequence here. Nevada's offense needs to respond. They came with some pressure, and this is going to be incomplete. Big hit by Kareem Brown on Jeff Rowe. He felt Brown's presence and uh, mutual admiration <laughs> coming. That's what football is about right there. Well, Jeff Rowe has become acquainted with Mr. Brown, <laughs> Mr. Atkins, and Mr. Campbell throughout this football game, but no harm on this play. A nice snapshot of sportsmanship after the big hit by Kareem Brown and Randy Shannon dialing up a, a linebacker blitz with John Beeson one of his fastest defenders, but no harm there. Jeff Rowe getting rid of the ball the big big thing you want to focus on is not taking sacks and no harm throwing the ball away on first down. Plenty of time. Second and ten. Oh, a wide out and it's picked off. Intercepted. Chavez Grant, the freshman. Lunging out, laying out and coming up with the play. Grant showing you why he was voted Miami's Rookie of the Year. Well, it was Willie Cooper against Boston College, Mark. You brought up the stand at the end of the game to, to make this team from Miami Bowl eligible. A little-known safety, Willie Cooper, and now it's a backup, true freshman cornerback. And I think Jeff Rowe was just surprised at how quickly Grant was able to close on this football. What a catch, though, David. I mean, people talk about the athletes at Miami, and they're going to let the clock expire. But how about Grant? Not only on the close, but the extension and to be able to make the catch on the interception. And wow. What, and what a close to the ending of Larry Coker's coaching career at the University of Miami as they register their 10th consecutive winning season, finishing at 7-6 and six overall. Nevada falling to 8-5 and five overall in the season. What a finish. Some of the legacy by Larry Coker left behind, and we go downstairs to Heather with the coach. Coach, congratulations on the win. Can you describe the emotions that you're feeling as you took the field for the last time? Well, I'm just real happy we won the football game. Well, we needed to win this game to, for our seniors and, and for our young players that's coming back and just to springboard our team into next year. And obviously, I'm not going to be the coach, but you know, I still love these players and recruit them, and I, I know their families. And, and uh, just very, ha very happy for the win. And, and congratulations, Nevada. What a great effort they put forward. In the next few minutes, when you go into the locker room to address your team for the very last time, what will you say to them? Well, I'm just going to congratulate the seniors and wish them the best, and all, and obviously the underclassmen. And just, uh, I think there's a lot of greatness in that locker room. I think it's, we have a lot of young, talented players. I think it's going to be a good football program, and, and we're not going to be down long in Miami. Coach, what kind of advice can you give your current defensive coordinator, Randy Shannon, as he takes over the reins tomorrow? Well, just be himself, be himself, and, and uh, do the best he can for the players. That's, that's what he's in it for, and uh, and, he'll, and and he'll do well. And Coach Coker, what's next for you? Well, I, haven't, I don't know that. Uh, Diane and I will talk about that, and, and uh, I, I think it's going be something good I really do coach congratulations on a great six years at Miami thank you Heather. Larry Coker a portrait of dignity regal classy from the Gables all the way up to Carroll City 
He's well respected in South Florida. Now here's tonight's player of the game, Kirby Freeman. 11 to 19 passing, 272 yards and a couple of touchdown passes, one to Shields and one to Moore. And a career high 272 for Kirby Freeman. Player of the game presented by Capital One. Well, maybe the season wasn't scripted the way that Larry Coker would have wanted it. Certainly wasn't. But as far as the ending goes, well, he'll take a victory. And he exits on a high note. That's what his players wanted for him. Miami wins it 21 to 20. For David Norrie and Heather Cox, I'm Mark Jones saying so long from Boise, Idaho. Under the lights at Broncos Stadium. Tight game, close finish. Now it's Randy Shannon's time at Miami. There's been a presentation of ESPN. Now we join John Anderson and Stan Everett. Happy New Year, everybody. Now it's Sports Center.